so I can move over. Yes. Okay, I can get a little more space. Okay. Good to go. Township of Persephone Troy Hills Township Council Special Meeting, May 10th, 2016. The meeting will be called to order by myself. Okay. Formal well, action may or may not be taken. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in accordance with the requirements of the open public meetings law by filing the notice in the office of the township clerk and by posting the meeting notice on the bulletin board of the municipal building on May 6, 2016. Where has remained posted since that date? Copies of this notice appeared in the daily record on May 10, 2016, or faxed to the store ledger and various other newspapers and local radio stations on May 6, 2016. Uh, Flax Loop, Mr. Creepy. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Mr. Carithi? Here. Mr. DePiro? Here. Ms. Guignani? Present. Mr. Peluso? Present. Mr. Valori? Here. Others present are uh, Mayor James Barbario, <coughs> Ellen Sandman, the Business Administrator, the Chief Municipal oh, Financial Minnesota. Officer, Ann Cucci, and uh, myself, the Town Clerk, Colette Madden. Uh, this is a special meeting, and the purpose of this meeting is the review and discussion of the Mayor's 2016 budget. Uh, Mr. President, we have a quorum. You may begin. Thank you. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to start off with our presentations on each uh, budget item, and we'll start off with the sewer utility. Right. I would like to uh, I ask Joe Beckmeyer and Joanne to uh, come up. And uh, again, we're on a tight schedule, um, but I believe we've um, talked with uh, each one of our department heads, and they know uh, to get the message out as far as what's been happening, what the future will look like, and then be ready to answer any questions. So I'm going to turn it over to Joe Beckmeyer. Joe? And Joe, can you just state your title and uh, yeah. who's with you up here tonight so the public knows? Yeah, Joe Beck, Joseph Beckmeyer, uh, Engineering Consultant, Superintendent of the Sewer Department. Great. Thank you. You're important. Am I using? <laughs> Many hats. <laughs> Joanne Mancuso, the Administrative Office Business Manager at the Sewer Utility. Great, thank you. Okay, we present our budget to you. Slight increase uh, from last year. Uh, the um, wind up putting in some additional money for uh, new s for sludge disposal uh, through a settlement with Cinegro. Uh, the price of that went up, uh, so that's reflected in the budget. Uh, a few extra employees that we've actually started hiring, as I mentioned to the town council, uh, I think it was back in January or so before you, uh, getting some, some new bodies in. We're in the process of undertaking that. Uh, we also have, we find out that by doing this, we're able to get more things done. Uh, many light fixtures in the building, uh, which are over 30 years old, inefficient, we can't get parts from any longer. Uh, we're moving ahead with things like that. Uh, pump stations, we find that some of the pump stations really haven't been properly addressed in the recent years, uh, making uh, the improvements on those so they operate when needed. Uh, we find that some of the generators have not, do not operate. Uh, leaks in the water system, the cooling jackets, and so on. So we're moving ahead with those. So that basically is in the operating budget. Almost everything else, many of the line items, are exactly the same as last year. Okay. In the uh, capital projects, one is we've undertaken, uh, which has been floating around for a while, the Lake Hiawatha I and I study, uh, inflow and in infiltration study. Uh, you notice during periods of very heavy rain. Uh, the treatment plan capacity can uh, be the flow through the treatment plan jumps up dramatically. Uh, I believe from the low lying areas, uh, as it would be expected in the Lake Hiawatha lower area. Uh, with Hatchmont McDonald is currently undertaking that study. We have flow meters at about a dozen locations through there. We're praying for enough rain so we get some uh, valid uh, information 
that can uh, populate the model will run on the sewer system. So for any different rain event, we'll be able to anticipate what the flow will be, what areas of the system leak more than others, and what we can do to reduce those, uh, those extraneous flow that might enter the system. Uh, also, things have been talked about for a while. Uh, pump station number four, which is the main pump station, uh, how to uh, equipment really needs all to be re replaced. But to what level should it be a force main pump station or just lift station? Uh, we have one pump station, a uh, new road pump station, pumps in, pumps back across across Route 46, then it pumps back again from pump station number four, try to eliminate some of those redundancies and some of that uh, wasted energy, uh, depending on what the capital cost would be to fix those. Uh, with the Skyview pump station, the design should be completed, uh, the preliminary design completed by the end of the month. Skyview is yep. Raystone, just so you Yes, okay, yeah. great. Okay, that. good. Thank you. Good. Um, that design should be completed by the end, the preliminary design by the end of the month. Uh, we're trying to determine the exact location. We're going to connect our force main from the new pump station into the county collection system. We CCTV uh, closed circuit televised the uh, the county pipes, which I guess uh, maybe could be 100 years old or so. Uh, some of them are in, in need of whatever. I would rather bypass them rather than having to replace them all. Because once we start pumping, uh, there's a good chance we'd wind up causing some sort of environmental problem. So we'd have to replace the pipes. So I'd like to just get away from their system so we go directly to their treatment plant. So we use our own lines, you're saying going straight into there? Excuse me? We're going to be using our own lines going No, to we're going to put a new force main in, a four-inch force main. So we basically, rather than tie in, in a short run, into the old county pipes okay. that can't handle the flow, we'll just bypass it, go as close to the treatment plant, uh, plant as possible. Since it's all on state property okay. and we're dealing with the state, we don't have to worry about the uh, dealing with the county or other municipalities or things like that. All right, great. That's smart. Okay, good. So we're moving to that point. Uh, the uh, wastewater management plan, we're working with the county to up to uh, modify that. Uh, by statute, I believe it's supposed to be done every six years. And the last time it was done, I found was, what, 90? 96. Uh, there was an attempt to do it about uh, 10 years ago, but it sort of fell off the table uh, when I thought others were going to do it. And so we're trying to get that back on track. Uh, we're working again with the uh, Patty Campbell in the building department to actually find out what properties are tied in. Uh, as you know, you have the uh, ordinance for the uh, septic system yes. plan uh, before you. Uh, that's one of the requirements uh, that will be adopted, another step in the way of doing this. Uh, we're reviewing the open spaces right now, and I guess at some point we'll be you know, working with you to resolve that. Um, let's say we're in a process of uh, starting the design, uh, a contract was awarded to a uh, local engineering firm to put uh, bar screens in the, um, in the treatment plant. Uh, certain things, I, I'm not really sure why they did it, uh, but when you have to rake, as the sewage enters the plant and you have to raise screens and you put it in buckets and clarry it up uh, like two flights of stairs, uh, it's sometimes a problem. Uh, I haven't seen anything like that in a long time. Uh, usually, if it's ground level, it's one thing, but when you go down into a hole, it's a different situation. So we're in the process of changing that to put in uh, mechanical screens to bring it up to the surface. Uh, we'd be able to handle, uh, especially when we get higher flows during rain, if they still persist after the INI study. Uh, also, uh, the two grit collectors haven't worked in years. Uh, as sand and so on comes into the plant, if it's not re collected and not removed from the system, it overflows into the sedimentation tanks, makes the sludge heavier, harder to dispose of, and so on and so forth. So it should be separated and disposed of specifically as sand, grit, and so on. Uh, so part of the design with the bar screens is to get those up and running and replaced with new technology uh, to make it easy on the men rather than once or twice a year that we go in with shovels and uh, into the tank and try to move things around. Do you have a lot going on there? Uh, a few things. Okay. Uh, trying to get things done. Um, okay. There's just a lot to do. Oh. Yeah. Um, we reviewed the, the capital budget. Uh, in fact, we've been talking with the finance director here that uh, what money is actually needed? How fast can we spend? Well, I can't spend it as fast as, as we have here. Uh, there's certain projects on the list I just don't see happening uh, 
uh, in anyone's near lifetime, and I don't know if we really need to. When the treatment plant was expanded to uh, from 12 to 16 million gallons a day, uh, when anticipation that what was needed, uh, after they started, they found out that the flow is really only about 8 to 10 million gallons a day. So there's a lot of built-in uh, extra capacity in the treatment plant. Uh, so there's no sense expanding. I don't see a sense of expanding the treatment plant by another 4 million gallons a day, even for any special needs, if we have the uh, capacity built in already. So we'll monitor that. We'll see how we, we're doing as far as uh, whether there's a need. But much of the capital money was for projects I don't see happening. Uh, we've been talking with the finance director how some of that can be uh, the fees. Is that the proper term? Uh, and she can talk about it. That's yeah, no, good. You're doing good. I was dying to get the microphone. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, so I talked to the bond council about how to um, cancel um, these ordinances. There's specifically for the for MGD plant, there are three ordinances totaling about $6 million um, that we will cancel. Okay. But in order to do so, we have to wait for the the bans, the bond anticipation notes to come due. When that happens, we will not be borrowing any of that money, and then we can go ahead and you'll get a uh, resolution to cancel those. And that'll go back in and the debt will be reduced. Okay. All right. And if you recall, that was a commitment we made when we first came. We said we would um, address the sewer plant, you know, you're talking about um, the cost of um, what the what the resident pay for sewerage is a very good number, but we also want to be ready for the future, and that is cancel where we can cancel. And six million dollars is is very appropriate to cancel, so our debt service will um, be very good. As much as the sewer plant is in very in excellent shape, the other thing I just want to go on record too: we made commitments here, and one of the commitments we made also was that we're using X amount of uh, funding from the sewer plant and we would regenerate. We, we more than regenerated what we used last year and that was a commitment you, to you. I make the same commitment this year. Um, I'm going to turn it back now to um, Joe and ask him to just tell you a little bit as quick as we can on the fog because he's been working with that. Um, the frog process, I started a few months before I got there. There were some uh, minor glitches, uh, some issues had to be worked out. I believe we've done all that. Uh, the, uh, I spoke to uh, the uh, gentleman from the uh, Lantern today. Uh, he said they, they're picking up and they're generating wastewater. Uh, they're, they're generating revenue for themselves, but in the turn what they're doing, they're bringing water to us, uh, which we're charging them for. They're paying a lease fee to the township, uh, but it's moving along pretty well, uh, and no adverse effects to it. Uh, some of the theory I'm reading about is that actually the, the high ammonia waste will uh, reduce our treatment costs. Um, since the treatment plant, uh, because of this and also the oversizing of treatment plants, where we have five blowers in the back, uh, we only use really one a day. So that reduces the electric costs even somewhat, right. somewhat further. Um, so. Joe, do you have an anticipated revenue on the fog say. for this year? Rough, any kind of estimate? I can't have it. Okay. Yeah, I'll get you that. We had Joe, the, uh, the FOG program, just for the public, it stands for uh, Fats, Oils, and Grease Yes. Uh, that we take in. I just want to make that clear for the public what FOG means. Um, so it's a revenue generator for us. And I understood last year the first truck rolled in with that uh, material uh, June 15th of last year. So we haven't really realized one year of revenue yet uh, for the FOG program. In your summation, how do you feel that program is working? Because I know you were a proponent of it. You felt very strongly about it. Um, tell me in your thoughts. The, um, in theory, when I read the, the papers about before I got here, again, the ammonia waste will or should help us we actually reduce our cost somewhat. Uh, in addition to that, we're generating, uh, according to the lease, uh, generating waste for, uh, money for the, for the township. Uh, again, mostly to offset our costs and so on. Uh, the issues initially were just the... Uh, you know, when the gate should be open, uh, when they, sh who should have access, uh, which direction the uh, truck should drive in, and things like that. All those have been uh, resolved. Uh, yeah. So there's really no problems. Uh, you know, every once in a while, uh, you know, someone will jump up and down, uh, and we sit, why don't we just sit down and talk and work out the problems rather than create a, a big problem. Uh, so it's working out pretty good. Uh, 
Uh, do you see a steady inflow of trucks coming in, or do you see the volume picking up? Um, I think it's going to pick up. Uh, one of the reasons is, you know, they're doing it. They hired a full-time marketing person, uh, is, you know, so they can sell to the haulers uh, that uh, this material uh, is a viable option for them to dispose of the material closer to their air, to the North Jersey area. Um, certain places want to take it other, but again, it works out very good here. Uh, certain things probably have to be done now from the fog standpoint. We talk about making money. From my fog standpoint, I'm saying if I have a facility that's not properly maintaining their grease traps and that's going into the sewer system, you wind up like uh, hardening in the arteries. So your eight inch pipe now all of a sudden is here and then you have backups. You have dry weather overflows. Do we have to call cruising in the middle of the night? Are there environmental fines because the water ran down the street, ran into the storm sewer, ran out to the river? So how do you maintain the system? And one of the things most many municipalities do, many agencies do, is have proper fog ordinances in place so similar to the septic that they're maintained. Because I've seen many times the property owners, it's cheaper to just run hot water down and flush it into the sewer system. Uh, so again, now this, uh, by having a fog, uh, fog facility locally, it provides a more reasonable location for people to get rid of it. And if we put together some sort of plan to prevent the fog from be entering the system into the sewer system, we will uh, help us in, in two different ways. You know, gener generating revenue and protecting our sewer system. Um, as far as the uh, what we're making, it looks like um, on a low side of the conservative side, 140,000. Um, but uh, we're going to work hard and make sure we hit that 200,000. Yeah, I believe I just anticipated what we collected last year about a little under uh, we anticipated actually 148 we collected about 160 I believe we'll get 200 but I only put 140 in the budget conservatively to build yes sir thank you any other questions from the council members here concerning this utility so I just have a couple quick questions um, if you can just explain this to me. The, um, and the operating expenses, this uh, NJEITC, which is the New Jersey Environmental Infrastructure Fund uh, Trust. What you, John? The operating. One of three. One of three. One of three. Yeah. Division 700. Right. Um, we budgeted 82,500 last year. We only spent 18,600. I'm not sure. Why? Actually, that final payment was made this year. Yeah. 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 So is that something? It, yeah. Okay. Right. We'll be yeah. using the yeah. new yeah. sheet. Now you would see more money. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So just, yeah. I, I, okay. yeah. Yeah. I understand. You know, sometimes we just have to cut. You know, when we get <laughs> right. you know, to get the stuff out, we cut cut now, off, and then sometimes it comes in. Would like the same the thing time. be for? Um, I'm just going yeah, with some big discrepancies like chemicals, chlorination. There's we budgeted for 185, we spent 101. Is that the same thing? There would be another. So when the order comes payment in, that's not on there. Uh, um, I got to go back to that page. Hold it's on. Number two, uh, 239. It's on page one of three. And it's uh, object code 239. Yeah, with the chemicals, that's the same thing. I, we would get bills in in January and February that would cover November and December. Um, and this was cut, they're saying 516, but the budget itself right in is cut prior. So your medical billing, too. Right. You know, it, so it, it, I mean, I probably could give you a figure. You were probably, uh, probably around 140,000 in chemicals for last year or 200 and I got about 140. Consulting fees? Uh, cons consulting services? Would that be, I mean, there's about 100,000, 95,000. Well, for left last year. We had eight months of no one there that we paid consulting fees out of because Phil left in April. There, yes. So that's why we had money left. This year you'll, you will not see that kind of balance in that account. Thank you. Councilman, one thing also though, as the treatment plan has been online for a few years now, and I mentioned that all of a sudden instead of using you know, two blowers or three blowers are using one blower. Uh, we have the thing with the fog coming in, which changes the process somewhat. One of the things I don't want to go too crazy and say we can save, you know, $10, $20 here, then we're short because not, and I'm not really sure what the net effect is going to be by changing the process. Right. 
You know, if all of a sudden we need more chemicals because some sort of upset or something we didn't anticipate, I just want to have the money available. Now, once we get to this, we're in place for many, a few years, we'll be able to better hone in on the numbers that they actually should be. Good. Yeah. You know, maybe one of the things, um, one of the things that you've all, all one of the things that maybe we'll address, because it was, a, it was um, a big question, and that is um, the uh, other towns that work with us and uh, utilize our system. Um, I know uh, I'll, I'll give it to Ann and then I'll turn it over to Joe. Um, she can tell you that right now, well, I'll let her tell, tell you that right now. That yeah, we have, um, we've had some issues um, with some of the outside townships um, because for years it was projected that the amount of flow was much, much higher. Um, when we got here, um, they discovered when they did the upgrade that the flows were much lower. Therefore, per the percentage that was being sold to the other outside townships was much higher, and therefore they're, they're, they had to be charged a lot more money. To get them to understand that, it really took quite a heavy lift, as Ellen would say, to get them to understand that we weren't just making this up, that, that let me give you the science as to why this happened. The good news is that they are paying the current amount. They're all of the townships. The two townships, East Hanover and um, Mountain Lakes, are, we're trying to work with them to get them to pay the back money. It's not a huge amount. Denville, yeah, Denville and Montville are up to date, and uh, we just have the other two. And, and they have bought on to the fact this is true. It's just getting the back money now. We have to negotiate the 40-year contract, I believe, with East Hanover. Yes? Well, we... <laughs> the contracts are in place, uh, have a life of 40 years, which you can uh, cancel five years before the expiration date, which is like uh, the expiration date is like the end of this year, next year, and so on. So we actually missed the five-year boat of it at that point. Uh, it doesn't say it must be negotiated. It says it may be negotiate, renegotiated uh, by with that five-year notice. So if we, you know, once we make a determination where we want to go, if we can't come to a complete agreement, uh, then we'd have to get them notice now, and in five years we'd have the something new in place, hopefully. Okay. So, okay, so that's I, just, yes. I have some additional questions. Um, you know, one of the things we talked about was revenue generation last year. Um, I always like to start with revenue. That's why I mentioned how we make it out with the FOG program. Uh, can you tell us if we can uh, get one of the units back online for taking in sludge to create additional revenue? We have been, uh, depending on, we've been taking uh, more septage into the head of the plant. Um, no one has really approached us, and you know, I usually find that municipalities really aren't good at marketing or selling themselves uh, when it comes to issues like this. Uh, but no one has really come to us on a full-time basis to bring more sludge in from someplace else. And again, one of the one of the differences, if we had an incinerator or we had Cinegro with that agreement, right. where there was some on-site. Uh, you know, uh, disposal or some way to get rid of it. But right now, we basically be taking the material in, dewatering and sending right out to landfill. Now, again, that might be advantageous for to some smaller facility. Uh, but when you get to, uh, you know, we're like in comp uh, competition with Passaic Valley Sewage Commissioners, which has like a 350 million gallon day plant, as opposed to our eight or nine, and uh, they have very favorable rates. So while well, sometimes I question the hall is, you know, since we're closer, you would think from a, uh, a transportation standpoint they'd want to stay around here. No, they're willing to drive all the way to Newark. Now, if the price of gasoline goes up to four or five gallon, dollars a gallon, then maybe we'll have more, more takers and people will want to come here. Uh, One of the things with regard to Cinegrove and making a settlement was because really science had changed. And there is some hope or, or some consideration that there's one or two people that are interested in using it, uh, working with us on electric, if you want to just address that. There's a revenue producing. Yes, that's what I'm looking at. There has been uh, some discussion uh, with Senegro, also with Lantern, and they're looking at other things, about which one parts of our unused system can be used to generate methane, electricity, and so on, right. our old digesters. Uh, and while there's been some discussion, uh, no one has really come forward with a, a concrete proposal of uh, what it could, you know, what it could be. Um, so we'll entertain those if they come through and find that if it really works and what's best for the township and not just best for the private company. I, I understand they're in business to make money, but I don't want to be uh, at the short end of the stick, you know. Right. Absolutely. Can you talk a little bit about uh, Lampton Environmental? 
which he has touched upon it already. Is, is that that's, where? That's the fog. That's the fog is operation. That, is yeah. that where the fog program? Yeah, Land and Environmental is the company. Comp that's should, the company that hired the marketing? Company, yes. Okay. Um, I just want to make sure that, you know, that's the company that hired the marketing. It's it's not another external company. We're only dealing with uh, Lantern Environmental. Lantern. Yes, Lantern. Lantern. Yes. Great. Um, some line items, I just had some questions shifting over to expenses. Uh, we touched upon the consulting fees. Do we plan to uh, replace Phil? Is that why we uh, budget for the 225? Well, that's why I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay, so you're paid out of consumption yes. right now. Okay. And uh, the electric supplies, uh, I see is 200000 uh, We only used about 61000 and we budgeted for about 60015 and uh, Why is there a spike in the electric supplies? Item number 304, Division 700. The reason that you're going to find the spike in the electric supplies is because work is getting done. First, That's a good thing. first of all... No, that, that is the reason. If if I didn't ask for an increase in the electric supplies account, we would be done. There there'd be no more electrical work done because he has already spent that plus this year. And well, our lighting in our building is over forty years old. You can't buy a ballast to replace. You can't buy a bulb to replace. He's not finding that here either. I mean, we do cover, honestly, a lot of expenses for other departments in the town. They use our electrician. He uses a lot of our supplies. I do get reimbursed from departments, but you're not going to see that in here right now. So we, we initially do put money out and receive it back from the other departments. But there is so much electrical work going on right now in the town and in the sewer plant itself. We have... Um, 40-year-old panels being replaced. And that was all discussed last year, I know. Right. And it was, it's a big electrical upgrade that we're doing. We have the major upgrade in capital from three years ago, but for this, for the little operating stuff, we have it in the operating budget instead of capital. Yeah. Okay. And the other line number is 427. That's page two of three. Pumping that's the pump station account. And that's the same thing. There is major work being done on the pump stations, the generators, the pumps. Um, rails, um, uh, the no, the no lease pump station just had to be completely redone for in order for them to open for the season, the one that's by the tent, and that was probably, I'm going to say about a twenty-two thousand dollar job to get that done. Um, again, with that account, he had a ninety thousand dollar budget. He spent eighty-one thousand. We're only a quarter year into the year. So I felt that I asked if we could increase that one and keep them working. Okay. Get the pump stations up and right. I'd rather, honestly, my, opi my opinion is spend the money now this year, hopefully next year, right. and go from reactive maintenance to preventative maintenance and be able to drop this back down to a $90,000 line item within two years and hopefully even get lower than that as preventative maintenance keeps going. This is strategic planning now, so... Yeah. Which we did address last year. Absolutely, I know we discussed this last year. With Joe here now and Joanne taking taking that lead, we're moving forward. I I know you, if there's no other questions, do you want to just open it to the to the public? Or? I, I have an additional oh, question. Oh, sorry. One other question. Um, yeah. We were talking about uh, the sewer fund balance uh, a few moments ago. How long does it take to regenerate the sewer fund balance? It took a, it less took a, than less than a year. It took less than it took a, year. a year. Yeah. For approximately how much? Um, we regenerated exactly whatever we utilized. The, the million five last year was regenerated and then some. So uh, a million five a year, and that's been consistent. Well, now now we're utilizing more than that because we can because we we're regenerating it. And as you see, we're putting all the um, bells and whistles together to make sure that we do do regenerate that. And and also remember that. One of the things that the mayor was talking about um, last uh, budget session was that in, by utilizing it, we talk about what about lowering the fees. M a lot of the money that we're going to get from Mountain Lakes and also from, wh which, ha is it East, An which Hanover? East Hanover? East Hanover is, is money that will rege help regenerate and it's coming from outside of uh, Parsippany. So to me, that's a win-win, you know, so. Making out with the overtime in the department as well. I know last year there was some overtime. 
bit short, but we're at 41 employees now, so. I, I think we'll be fine on the, our, our overtime amount. Um, looking at the fact that we have more employees alleviates a lot of the overtime. Um, we run three shifts. When you're running two to three people short on a shift, you create an overtime slot on a weekend. And so by hiring, having them trained, you've, you're filling in the overtime slots on the weekends and paying a regular salary instead of, uh, you know, right now I'm running probably about 37 overtime slots just with weekends. That'll probably go down to, I'm hoping, about 13 overtime slots for the year on weekends. Is there any opportunity to reduce the overtime for 325000 Because it seems to be from 15 and 16, we have the same budget and amount. How can we reduce the overtime? I, I wouldn't. Honestly, I wouldn't reduce the overtime at this point. Yeah, unfortunately, we really don't know what's going to come about. While making these changes in personnel, we'll be able to eliminate some of the, in, uh, the scheduled overtime. Uh, again, by running a 24-7 operation with a 40-hour shift that always doesn't divide through evenly and so on. So you want to put certain situations. Certain overtime is built in for weekends. Yep. You need so, a buffer no matter what. Yeah, if we need a buffer. beneficial to hire additional staff that would be more economical than spending? You know, I, I want to address it in the sense of in deference to um, Joanne and kind of the position she was in, but also um, now it taking full throttle working along with Joe. I think I think what you want to let them do is get through one year or two to see where, as they're saying, they can may modify it. They need these people just got hired. We don't know what the effect truly is going to be. I mean, you hope it's going to be a better effect, but now's not the time to cut. Next year, when you review it, and I want to tell you more good news is we regenerated. We used a million five. We regenerated two point nine million dollars. So our commitment to you was met and then some. So um, we feel the same way this year because we don't say it. Well, I, I hope so, you know, close to that. We're not utilizing all of that. Okay. Um, Joe, so are you going to do questions at the end then? Yeah, I'm going to take okay. questions with the public towards after the, uh, the entire uh, You're, I think if you from each department so they can take notes and they can You'll do it. after uh, we go through all the department. I know we started late, but I think in order to keep us on schedule, if there's no other questions that are need to be asked right now, Loretta, do you have something? No, no you're I was good? just going to ask about the new hires. I see okay. the chart, and uh, there are some open slots. Have they all been filled? Assistant superintendent process. The assistant superintendent has not been filled. Okay. Um, everything, we have two labor positions yeah. and the GIS left. Otherwise, we have filled um, one, two, three, four laborers' positions clerk. and the clerk's position. Thank you. Along with the electrical apprentice. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> we, because we work together, we know the, the answer. Because what we did was we um, that, that that pretty much mirrors what was in there. We just rearranged some of the money and provided for um, somebody to go from part time to full time. Somebody to. Um, uh, give some additional assistance uh, to Joe on the technical side, and then Joanne rounds it out and uh, brings up, you know, all the administrative, um, so that he that they work together as a partnership, and that's where we've concentrated on. But if you look at the numbers, they're pretty. It's you know, it, we didn't. It, we're, we're pretty close to what we had last year. I I think the increase in our actual salaries was two thousand dollars. And we've hired seven employees. We're hiring seven or eight employees. It's just a restructuring of what was in the budget. I mean, for the size utility you have, you need that manpower. Because it's 24-7. Yeah. It's 24-7, absolutely. Right, but my question was is to uh, reduce the number of, of hours of overtime. Would it be more beneficial to hire an additional employee for, over, for weekends right. rather than spending that amount of money on overtime annually? And I think our <coughs> answer is that right now they're seeing how it will work because when we're saying we hired, we just hired, you know, the, these folks. So we don't even know what the effect is of what we have. We have to and give them a yeah, we have to just see, <laughs> see, yeah. yeah. And because you know, we're really in the middle of the year already. So we, we need to just let let's see how how it works, and we'll be back to you, you know, uh, early next year. It's, it's 
it's not yeah. going to go anywhere. Yeah. Plus, it, it may work yes. out cheaper to pay the overtime rather than hire a new employee Correct. with all the yeah. benefits right. and everything else. Benefits, what is, I was you, know, for. It, it, you know, and if you do it just to hire somebody on that uh, off chance that you need weekend people, they're not going to always be there for you because they're going to be saying, well, I, I can't guarantee, you're not going to guarantee me this work. So I think you're right, Paul. It, it, it's better well, we'll to see. see. We'll see what happens. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Council because President, I, yes. would, I yeah. would recommend that uh, after each department finishes, you let the public speak so they don't have to sit around until the very end. Is that what you're this department is done now, so why don't you open to the public? Okay. If, if you All do right. that, uh, give it a three-minute time limit. Just yeah, we're going to have yeah, to have a time limit on that. Okay, that's that's fine, Mr. DePiro. Okay, that's great. All right, we'll, we'll open it up to the uh, the public now. No question. No one. What? I think we tried to anticipate you're, all your you're questions. Have to take a motion for every single time. I just like to entertain a motion to open up to the public. Make a motion. Second. Motion made by uh, Mr. Kruby, second by Mr. Uh, Peluso. Roll call. Ms. Griffey. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Ms. Grignani. Yes. Mr. Peluso. Yes. Mr. Valori. Yes. You sure don't have any question concerns? Okay. I'll entertain a motion to close it. Make a motion. Second. Motion made by Mr. Pelusa, um, by Mr. Creepy, second by Mr. DePiro. Roll call. Ms. Creepy? Yes. Ms. DePiro? Yes. Ms. Grignani? Yes. Mr. Peluso? Yes. Mr. Valori? Yes. Okay, thank you for your time. Thank Excellent you briefing. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Lots of luck in the future. Okay, now we'll present the uh, Knoll Golf Course. I'm just going over. Back again. Yeah, yeah, she's going to shift. Um, one of the things, um, as you know, we had an assistant administrator, and <coughs> what we did was at this point, um, Anne and myself have divided up the utility work, uh, working, you know, as a cheerleader and a supporter and a resource person. Um, uh, Anne has been working very closely with Glenn and Noel, and so that's why she's going to uh, run with him, and that's why I sat uh, close to our friends in the sewer department. As you had requested, that it wasn't necessary for the water. I think it's in one vital, sh v great shape. It's self-liquidating, self-supporting, and um, I also gave you your reports that you had asked for. I just want to make sure that uh, that's all up to date. So um, we've c accomplished already a lot of things in the water, um, that we did through the through the council on getting our um, redundancy in water and things of that nature. So, um, Kevin it, it said that uh, you know we're in good shape, and like I said, we're both comfortably uh, in in a good uh, revenue producing um, and a good uh, surplus. And uh, this year we are not utilizing any any water uh, funds for the balancing of the budget. Great, thank you for all your efforts. I think I'll start because I like the microphone now, Ken. <laughs> Um, yes, I've had the pleasure of working with the Knoll, which is, um, you know, it's our gem, and um, I'm very excited about it because it's a passion of mine. So I thank you for giving me the opportunity to work with Glenn and his staff. Um, we had a great year. I'll just talk quickly about that. We generated uh, $452,000 in surplus. The weather cooperated. It, go it gets down to the weather um, for the golf course. So just briefly, um, what we're doing uh, uh, basically with the course is we've changed. We're also in flux. We're changing the staffing, yes. okay? Um, in front of you, I believe, is the um, chart here of the people here, the organizational chart, and you're going to see that we promoted Matt Seacrest, who's been going to school um, at Turf to learn about turf, and we've split up the two golf courses for a reason. Um, the west is the big course, and the east is the bottom, and we're trying to think for the future because we know John eventually will be uh, retiring, and we're trying to move Matt into that position. But there's also another goal here is to really analyze the two courses and the costs, okay? That's never really been done as two separate entities. Um, in doing so, we've made them accountable for all their um, chemicals and all their manpower on a weekly basis we meet. They each presented us a, um, a proposal. So when you see the chemical increases in the budget, you're going to see, I can show you the background of why we're doing this. Um, they are accounting for every 
piece of chemical they're using and telling us why on a weekly basis and also their people um, assigning them to accounting for all their time um, why don't I give it to you a little bit to talk just just so you know first of all Glenn Fosell Goff superintendent Goff operations manager um, I have budgets that, that I was able to retrieve going back to 2007 and in 2007 the pesticide budget was $105,000 um, even with an increase of 5% every year on chemicals we haven't had the ability to increase that line item budget um, going back 10 11 years so it's key for us and as Ann said before the rain helps us but the rain also creates havoc because it generates more unwanted vegetation so um, we had a great March this year we had a mediocre April and now we're struggling for the first week of May with all the rain we've had I think the, 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 the biggest thing is realigning our manpower needs um, we, we for the first time have a true and accurate account of where we're spending the money you know the hardest thing I have is what people didn't realize when I first was appointed to this position we are open seven days a week 16 hours a day um, and and with the restrictions under the Affordable Care Act it's hard to staff the facility and keep people under that Affordable Care Act so we had reduced my seasonal manpower needs by 15 from the first year I was there down to the last three years so it's, it's, it's key for our success you know our biggest expenses is S&W but we don't want to jeopardize the service that we provide all our, our members and guests um, I'll just talk about a little bit about the goals um, besides our regular um, what we're doing with our, our full-time employees and, and the in investing in the seasonal workers um, and making them accountable which is the most important when you go through this budget um, we're doing a lot in the capital side which is really the story because last year you were able to give us those ordinances to, and I'd like to talk about those in the one ordinance um, we hired Stephen Kay who was here today as a matter of fact to work on a master plan for the for the golf courses and also to do the driving range our long-term goal when you look at this is to make it a family recreation area it's not just a golf course it's going to have hopefully we're going to put a driving range in we're going to put a school in because how do we get revenue going forward yeah granted we have the people who play right now but really where's our future it's in the children and it's in the families so that's our goal when we talk to Stephen Kay and about making a doing the driving range and putting together this master plan so um, if you would unless you, if you don't mind I'll talk a little bit about the capital real quick okay um, we haven't really asked for much in the capital because we still have last year's um, we do have regular machinery and equipment not a lot of money but I'll talk about the driving range we I think finalized with the mayor today our plan we looked at it from every different angle you can imagine which would make sense of course um, cost wise and also to keep the people coming so we have a plan for that that will you start to see I think we're gonna talk about going out to bed in July right. yes yeah, start work in August and um, open up in Memorial Day next year so you'll see a whole bunch of stuff going on down there um, it's going to start towards where Lenny Lenape um, the park I hope I said that right did I say that right it'll start down there so it'll be near the park and people will be able to access it so we're really excited about that um, the other thing that we're doing is the master plan um, the East course is dangerous it's very small it's very tight uh, if you've ever been there even if you don't play you can you're driving along and you can see those golf balls are coming over your car so we're addressing those issues um, and the other thing that we're looking at is the irrigation system we have a, we're looking at a couple of different people who are going to design that however until the master plan is complete we don't want to hire somebody to do a you know a, a plan for the irrigation system um, 
Joanne just talked about reactive. We are reacting at this point and trying to be proactive. So that's our goal going into this year, is to get to a point where we're not reacting to everything that's going wrong. Unfortunately, um, in their building and in our building, we haven't kept up with the maintenance as needed. So you're going to see quite a maintenance budget, I believe, in the line item. Some of the highlights um, going in, let's see. If you go to some of the line items you're going to see is, of course, the electricity, but, and the pesticides and fertilizers went up. I think you'll see that. That's all documented by the two um, uh, greenskeeper superintendents we have uh, detailed. And then the building maintenance really is our big one. I think you touched on everything. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I just think the key to our success is, is exposure. Uh, I'm not sure if, if, if you've had an opportunity. We have a new operational website, which drives more people to the website. Um, again, this year, July 5th, we're hosting the uh, state championship, women's amateur state championship. That's going to drive a lot of people to the knoll. Um, and uh, gives us the exposure that we need. You know, it's a, like like Ann had said, it's a hidden gem. Uh, we we just need to drive more people to the club. Our membership is at 740. Last year we had 765. So in reality, we're down 25 members. But just because our numbers are down with membership, the key to our success is the weather. We lost two weekends last year. We opened up March 1st. We closed January 3rd. We had a fabulous year. But with the weather now and the conditions, um, and again, I was speaking briefly with, with the carts. Believe it or not, if, it, if we get a lot of rain on, on, on this coming Friday going into the weekend, if the members cannot take their golf carts off the car paths, we're going to lose revenue. So, again, rain is, is, uh, is our, our key factor. You know, if it rains, we're going to have some trouble. So, um, <clears throat> The building is, is failing. I mean, I, I can't say it any any other way than that. You know, our, our line item budget for building maintenance has gone up dramatically. You know, it's every time I turn around, you know, there's a breach in a dike. So um, in, until we really sit down and collectively address that, um, that's one of my biggest concerns. We, we're, we're not we're not getting the exposure for weddings. People are coming in. I tell the story that the fathers love. The fee for the wedding, but when the moms and brides walk in, they turn around and walk out the front door because um, the building itself is antiquated. So we need to invest money to make money. We need to invest in a utility. I mean, that's, that's correct. Reality. Correct. That, the building will be addressed at another time. Um, we just started discussing that. We have an architect that we had hired. You had a group, um, thankful. Thank you for uh, hiring him, um, who's, who has done some drawings, and I, uh, we believe we'll come to you in an, as we know a little more on the building. Okay. I have the opportunity to, you know, to, yeah, I was really Yeah, we have uh, drawings. Um, what, yeah, and Lou was there, and I, I like it to see what we're doing, and we could talk about it later. Is there any questions or something I didn't address to you? No. Well, that you, you oh, no, I was just going to ask a because I noticed on here with the, the uh, I was just going to ask you the status with the credit cards. I know that was we had talked about that for the last year or so. How is that working out? Or uh, the the company that we use is Municipay. Um, the, the the system is 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 antiquated too. You know, it's it's a process where people can use a credit card. Um, this was one of the things we talked about. We spoke about two years ago right. about um, the anticipated revenue. And going out to bid and getting a credit card company to come in and, and what the fees were be, would be, um, we make no money on this. The transaction is a, there's a convenience fee of three dollars that gets put right on the person who uses the credit card. It has nothing to do with the null. Right. It's through municipality. We didn't make any money off of it, but I know, like Mr. DePiro said, there's times where people want to go golf, and he brings people there, and then. Because we didn't take a credit card, they couldn't golf or that. But now we take credit cards. We do. We are yes, we do. Yes. No, that's why I was asking. We're yes, sir. We're, we're all up in operation. Both golf courses, you can swipe a credit card, and there's ATMs at both uh, pro shops. Great. 
Could you tell me, Anne, a little bit about the, the bonding um, yep. on page 101, Division 830, 701 object code, bond yes. principle? Are you planning to go out for an additional bond for 215? Is no, that's the uh, principle being paid on the current. That's the current. That's the current. No additional bond. We, well, we're not going to, uh, we're going out for bans this year. We haven't, we didn't, the ordinances that you approved last year and last year's capital, if you go to the capital part of this, I gotta find it myself. It's in different order than I. I think it's 825 or something. 825 division. Yeah, in there, we have not borrowed any money yet on these ordinances, and you will see that coming. Okay, okay. for the driving range when we go out to bid, right. that will be this year, and some of the equipment. Okay, we did already put the down payment aside at the last year's budget. The irrigation isn't ready yet. So these are in fund balance right now, or anything? No, put out? no. Not for yet. No, we haven't gone out to. We're, you will get when we go out for the driving edge bid. That's when I'll be coming to you to talk about money. But are you planning to bond for the Toro aerator and the grinder? Yeah. Or are you paying for those? No. Because you really should pay as you go because you. Well, we'd love to, but that's last year. Okay. It's yeah, year we're year. we're. This whole ban this whole ordinance of three million dollars, we have not borrowed any money on that yet. Okay. No, not yet. Uh, the thing for the driving range was to do the right thing, to make sure we're not just sticking it in there. We wanted to analyze all the different ways you're going to go and everything else. And when we go out to bid, that's when we will go out and get we'll borrow notes. Okay. Okay. The equipment. Um, I just have a question in regards to the equipment. I know we approved it in our budget because there was a major concern they would need it, grinders, aerators, etc. Right. So we appropriate the funds for that, but they have not been purchased. So are they really necessary, or what is the why are they being held back the purchase of them? Yeah, I know, but it purchased. wasn't it wasn't shown in this in this ordinance. Um, what happened, Robert, was that this these items were already purchased under another ordinance. That was existing, and we didn't need the money in that equipment. Okay, so when we go out to borrow on that ordinance of three million, we probably will not be borrowing any of the money for the equipment at that point. Okay. Cause okay. I'd rather, I'd rather see just pay as you go for the equipment because the useful life. I agree with you. We we would love to be doing that. Okay, so we're not going to really bond for the, the three point nine. We're probably just bond for the irrigation and the driving, and the driving range. Yeah. That's, right. yeah. that's exactly right. Great. Okay, that's good. Thank you. Yeah. You're doing a nice job with that. Thing. Just a few things I'd just like to say to the council. I had the opportunity to uh, meet with the mayor and obviously Glenn Fossell and Anne, along with Ellen, in regards to uh, a vision of the uh, Knoll Country Club. And uh, it's my personal opinion, this utility is definitely that hidden gem that is definitely needed in our town to uh, bring in the revenues that are needed. And the Knoll Country Club is long overdue for uh, major renovations. And I believe that architect they have in place could save us a, a substantial amount of money. And then hearing the details from uh, Mr. Vossell as to, you know, weddings that could have been possibly, uh, you know, um, scheduled to be up there for uh, the past year. And there's, you know, I, you know, I guess family members that love the setting out there but are very disappointed about the look of the facility because it's older. And I guess the uh, arrangements for the wedding party. Glenn, if you want to kind of mention about that, some of the complaints that were being made about, you know, the setting area for the dressing rooms and everything else like that. Um, the buzzer is going to come on if Just I tell him exactly. Yeah, most. yeah. Um, so so the, the bridal suite is located right next to the kitchen. And um, these are all turtles. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's just the the entire design is just just not not convenient for anybody. But but again, the reason we do and and the caterer does secure weddings is because of the fee structure mm -hmm. but but i'm honest in saying you know when when the dads walk in they say i like it because of the fee but when the moms and the brides walk in they turn around and walk out the front door um the so-called foyer area um we, we continue to have problems with the roof the roof is leaking but Part of the capital plan was, and what we were doing was a back roof that was leaking. But it just seems like 
we fix one problem, and, another problem. and another problem exists. You know, we lost. You know, not not that it's a big deal, but a washing machine. You know, one of the things we did instead of using a company to launder all our towels at a cost that was through the roof, we do everything in house. The washing machine that we are trying to replace and it's in the process was 35 years old. So, you know, um, you have to spend money to make money, and that's basically where we're at now. And I just I just also want to mention that you know with the. Uh, the um, driving range that's going to bring in revenue because you're going to have folks here from different schools that would want to use the facility or really high-end members that would like to use the driving facility before they go into their the regular I guess their their daily game there so you know it's a facility that can make us money but we're gonna have to make the investment to really bring you know and, 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 and that's what I want to go off on what the council president just said um, I've been mayor seven years now and we've been bit piece in that um, building. It's going to cost us more money in a seven-year period, I mean, five-year period, just to keep fixing this, fixing that, than to just renovate the whole entire building. That being said, I did meet with Mr. K this morning with the driving range. And we're estimating, when this is completely done, that we can generate close to $100,000 in revenue just from the driving range. Easily. Okay, and the whole idea is now to reinvest in the sense that, yes, we want to make it family-oriented as well as a pro like a semi-private. We want to have all three things. We actually talked about miniature golf. Yes. Um, and we talked about that once we're done with the range, we're going to put a miniature golf in 18, I guess 18, you know, that's what I could play anyway. But um, and we're going to let the residents of Parsippany know, hey, listen, you can utilize this as well. Um, and we want to we want to make it to a point like you said it's a gem. He even said it's one of the top 15 municipal courses in the nation. So why not invest in it and make it and then we can start generating the types of um, surplus that we we should have. Absolutely. And Mr. Depiro, you've been going there for how many years? I've been a member for 40 years. So what's your opinion on this? Well, I've been anxious to see the driving range for a, a, not just revenue but a different reason. Um, we need to attract young golfers into the That's sport. Yeah. And we need to be giving lessons. We have right. no driving range to give lessons to introduce young people Absolutely. to the sport. So that that in itself will, is, is a perpetual thing for golf. Yes. I mean, it's a great sport. So yeah, it'll make revenue that's great. Uh, and when I bring guests here, I can point them to a driving range, <laughs> which I haven't been able to do for 40 years. That'll be nice. Um, but, but bringing young people in is, is something I'm excited about. And, and, and the councilman makes a great point. That's one of the things we discussed today. We have um, we have golf in both high schools. They'd be able to utilize the, the driving range. And there's a little putting session section to the right of the um, of the golf, so you can practice. And then and there's another one by the lower section of London IP. Um, and you're absolutely correct. We have to bring the younger um, generation into into the golf utility. So I agree with the council. Pointed out when. Uh, we had that meeting here for about two hours in regards to um, when you're moving into a town. The, the, the oh, right uh, the sales pitch. Yes. Mentioned. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I, me personally, if, if you own real estate in the town of Pasipani and you go to list your house to sell it and if someone who is an avid golfer could join an old country club to pay the fee structure that, that is set in place, will increase the value of your home tremendously, you know. What, what I s tell people is Rockaway River Country Club is right around the bend. You can walk in the front door for $40,000. And what's happening is a lot of people now are coming to the Knoll. We're getting a lot of people that have been at private facilities for years that just don't want to pay that kind of money. You know, whether you live in a town or you live outside of the town, it, it's, it's, it's a fantastic value, you know. And, and, you know, I'm blessed by some great people. You know, it's, it's all... It's a, when I took the position, everybody, they're all self-motivated individuals. You know, I'm not going to tell somebody that's been cutting grass for 31 years how to do it. You know, you just have to motivate people. But I think um, the course itself is what drives people to to the facility. Good. It Glenn, seems like we're going the right direction. Yeah. Glenn, you have A and B members. Yes. What is the time span to be an A member? You, you, you can come on as an A member, and this is one of the things that was... Uh, brought out in a report that was done in 1995. It's based on seniority. So, so basically, I encourage people um, to take a B membership unless they want to try to establish some seniority. But if you join today and you're looking to play this Saturday and this Sunday between 7 
at 9.30, it's next to impossible. It won't happen because the core group of our membership have been there 30 years, and that's the way they set that up 25 years ago where it's based on seniority with the club. But but I encourage people... But I encourage people to take the B membership, and, and, you know, we go with split tees on weekends. It's a little, you know, we, we, we maximize the amount. Of, we put 240 people on Saturday and Sunday on a golf course. Wow. That's great. Beautiful. I want to know job, if you guys man. picked out that washing machine that lasted 35 years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just at, at the break, I just uh, I encourage you to take a look at some of the yeah. plans and sketches yes. that we have for the NOL. So the interior is going to be completely... Yeah. Oh, yeah. You had some yeah. great visions. Great. Yeah. Beautiful. I'm glad. Yeah. I was yeah. impressed. Ladies, some additional ladies. comments. Yeah. Sure. Um, you know, one of the things you're absolutely right, Glenn. If we don't invest in the infrastructure, you know, it's going to deteriorate. And people don't want to have their <coughs> parties, their weddings there. Um, a case in point is the, the landmark, which is well known on Route 17, is closed down for a number of years now because the expenses of renovations. Um, if we start the renovations and we actually have a, a, a golf course that is actually maintaining itself, revenue versus expenses. And we're investing in that we're going to see an increased amount of revenue in future years uh, you do have to invest to, to spend money to make money uh, it's obvious and you see a lot of facilities that are not investing that are closing down we, we can't afford that in, in participating with this facility we have a lot of money invested in it we, we do have to ensure that you know it's self-sustaining obviously right um, and you know we would love to have uh, the Venetian let's say <laughs> uh, you know in Garfield I was just there yesterday for a business event but, uh, you know, we just can't afford uh, $15 million for something like that. But if we run a shoestring on a budget and we can get something accomplished, uh, I think we'll have a, a good realization of, of revenue coming in for that utility. I think you'll be pleased with um, the drawings that our architect has done. I think it's cost effective. and Absolutely. Uh, it, it, the building is a very nice design. It's just making it today's building versus 25 years ago. I just want to make a further comment. You know, and since you took over this task, I know you have a passion for golf. I've seen a lot of forward progress, and you've done a terrific job getting the bids and, and working with everybody, keeping the council informed. So keep the good work with that. It's commendable. Thank you. Okay. If there's no more questions, I'll turn it over to you, uh, you Council too, President. Glenn. Yes. Okay. I, oh, and you too, Glenn, he said. <laughs> I'd like to entertain a motion to open this up to the public if they have any questions or concerns. So Second. Motion made. Oh, we have one. Okay, great. Well, we got to take roll call first. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, motion made by Mr. DePiro, second by Mr. Griffey. Roll call. Mr. Griffey? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. Ms. Grignani? Yes. Mr. Peluso? Yes. Mr. Valori? Yes. Okay. Hi, uh, Katie Cassidy, 7 Stephen Terrace. And yes, Ellen, I've done this before. Um, I've been playing golf since I was five. I've been going to this golf course like crazy. I was on the golf team in high school. The East um, was, it was a little bit tough for me to, to even play the East, and I know the West is a lot tougher. Um, I love what you guys are doing with this. I'm very excited. I know that right now you have a lot on your plate, but I just wanted to make a comment moving forward, maybe looking into, especially because we're looking to make this a family-oriented thing with children, looking into organic pesticides, because I know pesticides tend to have a, an issue, especially with young children, and that, that was just all I wanted to mention. Thank you. Thank you. Very good point. One, one, eight. Any other questions? Anybody well, else want to come forward? Like to make entertain a motion to close? Make a motion. Second. Motion made by Mr. Creefy, second by Mr. Peluso. Roll call. Mr. Creefy? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. Mr. Guriani? Yes. Mr. Peluso? Yes. Mr. Valori? Yes. Yes, I'd like to entertain a motion so we could go on our uh, break. our break. Yes, make a motion. Motion made by Mr. Creefe. Uh, we have the police before the break. No. Why don't we have the police first because they're waiting? No, because the police are here. They're here. Oh, you want to do that now? Aren't they here? Aren't, aren't they before the break? Yeah. I figured they, they were bringing us food, so we're going to eat with them, and then they could come on up. Are they after the break or before the break? <laughs> no, they're before the break. All right. Okay. Going on the break? Yeah, All right, we'll, we'll bring them up now. No, it's actually on to do it now. Okay. All right, we'll do them now. says that? All right. Well, he came up to me. He wanted to. Sorry. We were just adjusting. Sorry. Blame it on. Because it's going to be. We're going to blame it on me. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Is the. Uh, I think this. Yeah. 
Is oh, it, it is? It is here? Yeah. What is it? What kind of food? Sandwiches. Sandwiches. We have macaroni salad. Yeah, it'll be more Potato salad. Salad. And salad. <laughs> salad. What kind of salads? I think it's better to have that salad. Yeah, oh. yeah, come on. Everybody. Chop, chop. Yeah, they can, yeah, I'm going to go back there. Chop, chop. Hello, Hello. Chief. <laughs> How's Chief. everybody today? Doing well. Good. 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 How are you, sir? Welcome, Chief. Captain. Hello, Chief. Thank you. Captains. Got the whole A team here. Absolutely. Chief, I appreciate you showing up with your staff. Um, if you want to make your presentation in regards to um, your budget, uh, greatly appreciate it. Well, I think you'll find that our, uh, our budget request is uh, quite reasonable. Uh, as you know, we, we've had uh, issues. Uh, with vehicles, for example, uh, there were several years where, uh, many years ago, uh, where we didn't get enough vehicles, yes. and uh, as a result of that, it's had a uh, cumulative effect that uh, has created some some serious problems yes. for us. Um, you'll uh, you'll note that in, in the budget we've we've requested several new vehicles. Um, some of them are uh, for patrol, and some of them for the investigative division. Uh, the investigative division has not gotten a new vehicle since 2008. And uh, with many of these issues, I'm going to uh, defer to Captain Wieners, who has uh, done quite a bit of uh, research on this. Uh, so okay. he he'll be in a position to uh, answer any specific questions that uh, any of you may have. Uh, and other than that, I, I think that the, uh, the budget requests uh, speak for themselves. And of course, we're at your disposal to answer any questions that may come up. OK, great. Great. Is there anybody else that wants to you know, mention anything in regards to what the request in or? It's OK. Let me put my public safety hat on. You know, um, I have a good memory. And, and when we bring up different issues, Last year, we had the concern about that uh, when, when you and uh, Paul were on the uh, Finance Committee, we had the issue with the, with the guns. Yes. Um, we did not purchase those guns because we didn't have the opportunity to get a chance to come out and review the type of guns. If I may, Chief, I'd like to turn it over to, I guess, would you want to just address that and what, how in this budget that does put the guns back in at a big, tremendous savings? I think you might want to hear that. End up doing with the 30 plus thousand dollar budget for the guns last year. I think, uh, isn't that still sitting there? Uh, they had eight dollars left in their budget. I don't know. We were told not to spend that, yeah, so because it was we never addressed it with you. Oh, I know, but where is it? Where's the, the 30 plus thousand that we budgeted? Where is it? Um, he will tell you. <laughs> I'm sure Captain Wieners has accountability on all that. Yeah, he does. Thank but you. I think when you finish the that part. I think also just to say what, how we're going forward and getting what we need using this, the same funds we have now. You're still working with the uh, six hour? Okay. Which is how many years old now? They're approximately 10 years old right say, now. Yeah. And uh, basically what we're looking to do is replace them with another SIG 40 caliber, um, which will allow us to do a number of things. Number one, we won't have to change holsters, which is a huge savings, there. savings right there, and the training issue won't be an issue. Now, is it is it the same, um, just is it the same model, different version of it, or is it a, a better weapon? It's better in the sense that it's a, uh, and you guys will understand this, it's a double single action as opposed to the single action. Oh, really? Okay. So we're going to have a smoother trigger pull on the second and subsequent rounds. Okay. And also, we're going to be getting some money back as a, a trade-in from our current weapons, which make it significantly um, more cost-effective. 
Okay, and what are you going to do with the old weapons? You got to sell them back, or they would be traded in, correct? And we can get <clears throat> um, more than fifty percent of the overall cost on the trade in. So oh, it's great savings there. Okay, good. Well, I know you're an expert in this area. Yeah. No, my like I said, my I see it in there. My yes. only question is, what happened to the thirty something thousand that we budgeted last year for the guns? Why didn't we get them? We went over in other areas, such as building maintenance. Um, building maintenance last year. We budgeted for 101,000. We spent 118,000. Uh, we had a number of unanticipated repairs, um, a lot of air conditioning issues, mold remediation. Which have always been an issue in that building. With the it, they're, it, they're starting to beco become more common, yes. I know the ceiling was always, the roof was always leaking on that. And uh, that's an issue that we're wrestling with right now as well. Right now. But yeah, the, um, our biggest storage last year was in the um, the building maintenance account. Did a lot of it have to do with the design of building the peak there they put in? The cupola? The, the comp set, you know, our dispatch was all... Yes. Um, what we're finding, and we're still having issues with that now, that uh, Joe Janarone and his staff are trying to figure some kind of solution for. Okay. Uh, basically what happened when they built the building, they used copper and I believe aluminum... Um, Flashing? Flashing, and the alloys are destroying each other, which is creating a leak issue. They're trying to figure out the best way to, to remediate this, but it's it's going to be an issue this year, no doubt. Okay. So another challenge for us in regards to uh, a building infrastructure here. Okay. That's a newer building. Okay. Thank you. We're going to have to get Glenn over there now, yeah, too. Yeah, <laughs> right. He's an expert. And, Chief, in regards to the manpower, um, can you tell us a little about the manpower that you're requesting? Well, I'm, uh, I'm requesting uh, that we bring the, the force up to 113. Which I know you have always asked for. Okay. Yes. I understand. Um, and uh, as, as I think you all know, our, our men and women are doing an outstanding job. As a matter of fact, just today, our new... Uh, special Enforcement Unit made a significant drug arrest here in town, oh, uh, seizing, what was it, uh, 36 uh, marijuana plants, uh, as well as some other things. In town? Yes. All right, good. Being grown in town. Uh, and that kind of Very illustrates uh, my point that, that there, there are issues here that have to be addressed, and that requires the adequate manpower. Uh, our in investigative division, uh, the personnel, uh, in it have been decimated over the years. They're doing a great job, but uh, there aren't enough of them. Where are you at with the manpower in the uh, the investigation division right now? What are you at with manpower now? We have a total of 18 in the division, including juvenile, uh, okay. sorrows, uh, and adult section. Okay. So we're more needed in the adult section and juvenile, I'm assuming? Uh, we're about half staff right here. Yeah, okay. the adult section with detectives that we were 15 years ago. I think the the, uh, the juvenile section, uh, as a result of what we've all been doing this year, uh, is in much much better shape. Uh, but we still have issues in in the adult division. Uh, we're making progress; things are getting better. But this is why I've asked and I'm continuing to ask for for the adequate staffing that we need. Uh, this is a, a big town uh, with a lot of issues going on, and I want to maintain. Uh, what we've done as a proactive police force uh, and being engaged in the community. Uh, there are several initiatives that we're, uh, we are pursuing to uh, maintain that outreach. Um, and you need people to do that. The question I was going to ask um, uh, the, the captain in the investigation division. With handling the cases now, are you finding that, that you have to bypass some cases where in the past you would assign cases and you would work each and every case that was given to you now. Is it difficult to really kind of separate the cases as to what you have to concentrate on? There's a bit of a triage going on. Yes. And, uh, prioritizing what can be done. Uh, typically, what will bypass uh, are fraud investigations, uh, which are uh, very time consuming. Yes. We will only bypass it if it's going to be followed up by the bank itself or some other agency. We won't just not investigate it at all. Uh, but typically, we would have participated in that investigation and uh, if it's normally comes back to a, a local source or suspect. Yes. Uh, we, we just cannot put the time in those type cases anymore. 
uh, because the other ones are uh, much higher priority, violent crime, investigations, burglaries, uh, car thefts, uh, that requires uh, an immediate response. And those type of uh, investigations take someone with a real specialty too, a skill set, to be successful in that, I'm assuming. Yes, as far as the training, uh, continual training in the county, uh, a lot of time spent on training and working with another agency, which we pulled the detective out of the office and not able to uh, oh, easily. work with the other cases. So okay. uh, definitely much more reactive than we were years ago with full staff. Much okay. more proactive Chief, that time. <clears throat> the two new SRO officers the detectives when they're yes. not in the schools when school's out or they're on break what where are they in the detective are they in the yeah they would be section? working in the investigative division but uh, what what they're generally doing is using the, their vacation time and so forth during those periods of time that there's no school Right. Oh, yeah, I, absolutely. They're they're only getting the time that 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 they're allotted to. I'm not, it's not that they get, uh, they get the summer off right. by by any stretch. But when they're no. not, so when they are at work, are they in the investigative section? Or yes, they yes, they are. Chief, I remember. I don't know whether it's yourself or perhaps Captain Carney. Uh, years ago, we used to have a. Uh, bicycle patrol in Lake Hiawatha. Now, do we not have that because we're low on staff? Technically, we still have it, but okay. because of staffing issues, they're not able to do it as, as much as I would like. And that's uh, an, another illustration of what I'm talking about. Yeah, I, I'm i in Lake Hiawatha quite often. I have my business there also. And I do see a transition occurring. and. Uh, I personally would love to see those guys back again on their bicycles. And I, I would love to have them there. deterrent for whatever is occurring in these little pockets. Yeah, the bicycle patrol is is very effective on, on a lot of levels. It's a great community relations mm -hmm. uh, vehicle, too, because people stop and talk to the, to the guys on the bikes and so forth. And they don't just work in, in Hiawatha. We mm -hmm. have various sections of town in the apartments, for example, that uh, they can be very, very effective. They can get to places without being heard or seen until they're right on top of it. Uh, it's it's, it's a, a good program. And it keeps them uh, from getting too large, you know? Riding bicycles is hard. I just saw a large group going out. It was in the newspapers. They went out to, uh, with their remembrance of the uh, bicycle patrol. She just came case. back from the Unity Tour. Yeah. Uh, this is, in fact, day two of the Unity yes, Tour. So uh, by, by scheduling here and today, you, you've uh, permitted me to avoid 100 miles of bicycle riding today. So okay. thank you very much. You're going to make it up. I'm sure they could get you back in the car. Yeah. yeah I'm, I, I, once I'm done with this hearing, I'm going to go meet the tour in, in Delaware and oh, complete the rest of it. Tomorrow's oh, another 100-mile day. Oh. And by the way, while we're, I was going to wait day. until the end to mention this, <coughs> but... Uh, a sad note, and uh, I think many of you may know Joe Franklin, uh, Roxbury PD. Uh, yesterday at about 1.30 in the afternoon, we were riding on Route 202, I believe in Bedminster, uh, downhill, moving pretty quickly, about 30, 35 miles an hour, when a rider fell. Ugh. And that caused a chain reaction accident uh, involving about 10 riders, bicycle riders. Uh, Joe was one of them. and. He's on life support, really, and it doesn't look like he's going to make it. Did he? Okay. Wow. He had his helmet on. He did all the right things. It's uh, you know when you've got hundreds of people on bicycles in close proximity, moving 35 miles an hour, uh, it's potentially dangerous. Sure. Terrible. Uh, Council President, one of the things which we're trying to do with the police department. As you know, we have the SROs, a new um, agreement with the Board of Education, but more of a, more uh, that the police officers get out there within the community. Um, like if a police officer driving around and seeing a game going on at Smithfield, get out of your vehicle, introduce yourself to the community, to the kids, to the families, and even if it's a, on either side of town. So 
that's what that's what we want the police department to be the face of Parsippany as well. Absolutely. So you know, and you know, you being a former police officer in Parsippany can understand that. Um, and we're going to institute the Parsippany uh, Police Explorer uh, program. We'll be back in Parsippany. Long overdue, yeah. Yeah. So, and there's some other things that are, you know, in the future we'll explain what we're going to do with the police department as well. Great. As a matter of fact, uh, Captain Wieners is a product of the Police Explorers program, so remember that you know it works well. He's one of our dispatchers, too. Yes. See? Well, great. Um, Chief, in regards to manpower, um, I know that we would like to, you know, eventually get you up to where you need to be. If we were able to, um, you know, again, discussing with the council, um, go through with hiring five or six, how, how would that suit the needs for the... Uh, the patrol right now would that be uh, asking for six you, well obviously it like, that it looks like you're asking for six now it looks like we, we have a hundred you know, going up to 106 yeah no, yeah I'm asking, no, he's for, asking 12. for 12 oh, okay. um, so if we met you at a halfway point five or six officers with that well know, that would be that would be much better than what I've got now uh, and greatly appreciated. And, and, and where would they go, say, if we were able to provide that in the budget? Well, that? immediately they'd be going into patrol, but uh, the investigative division, the traffic section, uh, these are things that uh, that require uh, manpower. Okay. I, I don't know what the uh, other council members, what their, their feelings are on that. Mr. Chief, we approved five last year, and the, the five officers that. that we approved, are all of them working now? So There's actually more, more than five. 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 So it's about seven or eight. Yeah, there, we, we still have uh, several officers in the uh, police academy. You do still have several in the academy. Is that taken into account within the number you're asking for right now, or is that uh, above and beyond that number, the ones that graduate from the academy? That Are you brings assuming up to they graduate one. from the academy? Well, uh, they're, they're counted on the books, even though they're in the academy. They're counted on the books, right? Yeah. But if they don't make it through the academy, then you still have to find a replacement for those. Correct. But they're about to but graduate. But they're, they're near graduation. Plus I think it's next does week. Real stupid. Yeah. They graduate at, in at like this point. two and a half yeah. weeks. They're, they're all going to make it. Good. Okay. This yeah, I, I would be very surprised if they don't make it through at this point. This is the cream of the crop that was picked. I was here the day of when they were sworn in. So I anticipate them graduating with flying colors. They're not going to screw up. Thank you. We turned this into a dollars and cents, though. We hired five last year. More than, more than anything. How much, how much in overtime did we save uh, from because we have five more police officers? And if we give you five more this year, what can we anticipate in savings in overtime then? Try to justify the dollars that we spend. Well, the, the impact um, is... is uh, can't really be seen yet because uh, uh, some of these officers are still in the academy. When they get out, they're going to have to go on the field training program, uh, and that's a 12-week program. Uh, so when we're hiring these people, they don't really become highly useful to us for over a year. I understand year. that. I understand that. What, what I'm looking for is, is, I don't know what your overtime is, not in, I didn't know, $400,000. That's four hundred thousand dollars in overtime was now. last year and continues. So, so what will that be cut when you have five more police officers out on the road? In raw terms, I believe we'll we'll cut it in half. Okay. Which would pay for one, one or two of those cops. Well, at their level, maybe. Um, more than that. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, the, um, the chief and uh, has cut over time by um, not just by you know, hiring of individuals, but by the uh, schedule and the times off as well. So there's a significant decrease in overtime due to the restructuring of, um, I guess it was a. Uh, what was the the? Uh, we restricted supervisors' time off to one supervisor at a time, and that. That helped, uh, and we massaged the uh, uh, training schedule and so forth to ensure the minimum amount of overtime. And I really have to give credit to uh, Captains uh, Miller and Carney for having uh, done that. They did a, a, a really good job cutting the overtime in, in about half. Do you know what we 
spent in overtime last year? Or? I know we also saved money on it with the SROs too, with the change of. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I'm showing four hundred thousand on Division Two Forty, page fifteen of fifteen. So we went down significant then the following year, it's almost a million dollars. Now in 2015, we had 400,000, and we're asking for a budget of 400,000 again in 16. Chief, one of the questions I have in reference to the overtime, since we're on that topic, is that, um, you know, Council President at the time, uh, Karifi and uh, Councilman Valori both did a good job on working with you, and they uh, supported a change of a table of organization to reduce overtime. And I believe there was a commitment from what I understood that we would reduce the amount of overtime that we spent. But I didn't see that happen. Can you please help explain that? And we did hire the additional officers. Well, no. I think, no, they, 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 well, we, we budgeted 400,000. That's why I was asking for the numbers, because I know. You know what the thing is, we believe retirees, the way Dave does it in the computer, they're going to be counted too. So there's 101 as far So what is the real number then? Yeah. 101. 101. 101. 101 officers. Okay. Right. No, no, no. The, the overtime, overtime spent. Yeah, because I know it was down, right? Because from oh, the year before, it was 800 and something thousand. Yeah, right. And right. It, it went down. What did it go down to? Between four and five, something like that. We'll, we'll verify. So we okay. cut yes, 400,000 off. That. Well, that, the, that was the question I have, is where we, we went. We didn't get to get the, um, uh, the agreement with the SROs, which was a big part of the overtime, until later in the year. Because when we hired the officers, what it did was naturally it's going to yeah. reduce the overtime. Reduce the overtime. But there's always a set fixed number as a buffer for three to four hundred thousand dollars in overtime. Because that's just the reality of the work they do. Because you're the reason, the reason I'm asking the question is, if we're going to fight with the two percent cap, it's going to be difficult to get there. Um, and we still want to expand the police department by some number. I'm saying if we can cut this 400,000 to 200,000, we can, we can give up the police department, you know, still increase the police department, but not increase their, that portion of the budget. Right. Right, but um, I think, I think, uh, you know, uh, not that I'm going to be the person that's going to say that, but I think that um, uh, 113 was what, when, when I met with the police department, we said, leave it there so that um, the uh, council and mayor can, you know, really digest it. Um, I think because of the tightness of the budget, because of the fact that we don't have an additional 1% even allowed this year, it's just a flat 2%, um, because of other factors, I think in fairness to this community, in fairness mm -hmm. to you as elected officials, I think the number is not, should not be 113, but somewhere in the neighborhood of 106 or 107. And uh, it will do two things. It will provide additional manpower, women power, and also um, help us with the budget because, you, as you know, that would be approximately $300,000, $350,000 savings. And also the fact that we are in the middle of the year, so by the time we would, the others would come on, it would, it would help, help the budget out tremendously. Well, again, uh, to increase the police department, I support that. Yes, okay. and we would be. By and I'm still concerned about the 2% cap that we have to meet. Okay. Remember, so, um, so if we increase the police department and that reduces the need for some overtime, a reduction in the overtime could pay for the increase in, in the police. Right, but I wouldn't not not I one for one. At this no, time. I'm not saying. Yeah. No, it might be said five. Them on board. Right. So yeah. if we increase it by five, that gets us to 106 this year. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and then you're still decreasing the budget by the. Right. right. Oh, I, so, and, and if you get, but, the, you get the, the double effect that you're talking, you, you're addressing the double effect of reducing Increasing. some overtime, right. and yet that's what I'm up, yeah. and, and, and reducing right. the budget. Right. The same thing. And reducing the, the budget. Yeah. Let me just put up my hand for one minute, though. You know, working on the police department here. Yeah. Unfortunately, it was like our utilities that had. You know, we kept trying to fix them and fix them, like the null, like the sort truth plan. Now it's the moment in time we have to make investments in those utilities so they prosper and make money for the town. Unfortunately, the police department since years ago has really been, you know, um, understaffed. understaffed. It was out to 87 members. And we, we can give ourselves credit here, we really brought yeah, you up to a number so far, 101. And we're going to need to get even further up there. But unfortunately, it's a um, vicious cycle because you have the officers coming out of the academy, and then it takes them a while to be trained so they're efficient on the road and you know they're going to provide safety for the community and for themselves 
and then there's another cycle of officers. So it's going to take a good two years to really to be up to where you need to be where that overtime is going to be reduced. I would just suggest is that maybe you might bring down the overtime budget in there so maybe a little bit, but there's Murphy's Law. You don't know what's going to happen, you know, what investigations are going to occur, what, you know. Plus, but these hirees will not affect the overtime. Yes. Right. No, they're, they're, right. they're not part of it. Yeah, no. Part of it. And they're at the minimum salaries right. they're in the academy. Yeah, so um, mm -hmm. so we still have time to discuss the, the numbers, but you know, I, I would suggest five to six, but again, we'll still have to talk among ourselves as to yes. what we're gonna do to uh, try to get to where we need to go. Okay. And so we haven't so made we a decision yet, we're just talking about it. Oh. So Should we do that now? Do we need a motion right now to increase no. five officers to bring no. Yeah. Do, no. Uh, the end of This will be like we did last year. We'll, okay. we'll so make we'll a little change next year. We don't know other pieces okay. that might be Yeah, we, we okay. just want to see what okay. dialogue yeah. they have with us. We're trying to okay. work with them. So you're, you're happy with another five officers for Anthem 106? Yes. That would be, that would be sufficient. Well, optimally, I want what I'm asking for, but I understand Obviously. the yeah. re realities of the situation. And uh, yeah, that would, be, that would be very helpful. And, and, just, for, and for the record, working together and getting the things that they need. One of the questions that Mike asked when he was talking to me about the budget, he said, what about providing services? And I said, services aren't cut. But working together, like you want, they needed um, four of those um, traffic. They said, you know what, we'll do two. And again, we're not putting them in capital, we're doing pay as you go. Yes. So working together, we say, where is the need? Let's get it out there, but let's say two will work. You know, not we, we don't need yeah. the whole four. Absolutely, yeah. fair. Definitely a give and take. And then, that's why I brought up the guns because I'm glad we didn't pursue the guns because that course would have been escalated, and we never got to do what you had recommended, which was to train with them. But in talking to um, when when Tom turned it on to Jay, uh, we, I said, don't get the guns because at that point. The cost, and I'm glad we didn't because look what happened. We did now, we're getting s guns that make sense that are a better type but are similar. You're getting the, the, the fact that they work. See, they're, they're working smart and they're working smarter by saying, Okay, let me see. I'll trade. She should be your spokesperson. She has a passion mm -hmm. to stick well, up for his own. I think that was the plan last <laughs> time too, was to trade in, yeah, but trade I think in. it was the top. Yeah. Yes. To right. A company that I, I would just like to see, I would just like to, I mean, we budget the money. Yes get the guns rather than you know using it for repairs on the PD and stuff like that because I, I want them to have you know for the safety of the officers and stuff to have I'd rather have them having the new guns and you and know are gonna have to be, be up guns. to par rather than no I mean I'm just saying spending the money on you know a couple things in the PD and then all of a sudden now we don't have the money for the guns you know what I mean the money didn't really go away remember we had a very very sparse budget and right. the thing is the guns were operating we knew we were going to pursue guns um lots of moving parts they i wish they had we had the time in which we had gone on the thing and maybe that decision would have been made but i believe when all of was said and done sometimes it's it's a it's a, a living document the budget so therefore i'm i'm glad um i'm happy that we're moving forward now to yeah. get the guns Right. But no. back then, I mean, the money didn't go to waste. And again, if they hadn't spent it, they were only eight dollars about. I'm, I'm, not, I'm being not facetious, right? I mean, it was a very little bit of money left. But the point, but the point I'm making, even if there was some funding left, I believe that that type of gun, based on your expertise, I bought onto that and said, that's not the way to go. Why are we getting the Taj Mahal or the top gun? I, I hear what you're saying. Right. Well, passionately, yes, I don't want a, an injured officer. Uh, in a small force in Mendham, a guy was on the range and, and something blew back and you know hit him in the eye. Thank God it didn't take out his eye. But, you know, so I, I had this, you know, balancing thing. But um, as luck would have it, and thank God, they, they are going to pursue the type of weaponry, which is, um, it, it sounds like a, even a, a better, same type, but a different uh, or, or previous model. Model. This is double well, action. Last year we were talking about going to a different caliber of weapon, which would have changed a number of things. The, the, the holsters. holsters, which are over a hundred dollars each, yeah. for and training. Plus and so, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. I hear what you're saying. As well. No, yeah, no. I'm just saying is, <clears throat> once we get the budget, get them oh, no, no, get get so then all of a sudden the money's not yeah. disappearing. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. 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 Make their guns a priority, not. Yeah, yeah. No, we, yeah we absolutely. Yeah. Priority, sure. Making it the right priority. No, I right. Know. Getting now. And the other thing is so. 
they wear hats in the office. The rain comes in, they'll be dry. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? I'd rather get a little wet than all of a sudden need my gun and it doesn't work. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I just, want to, I just want to say for the record, I concur with Councilman uh, Karifi. Uh, you know, if, if we budget for the weapons, it should have the weapons. Uh, I believe in the safety for our officers who are out there trying to keep us safe. You should have safe equipment and the armament that supports that as well. Uh, so, you know, we encourage you to do what you have to do with that. The other question I have is in regards to how many vehicles that uh, are you looking at realistically for the Detective Bureau? What we're looking for is eight marked patrol vehicles and four unmarked vehicles uh, to the Detective Bureau to for the uh, traffic section. And how many is that up since last year? Last year, we, um, I believe, we it was get five last year? marked, uh, and that was it. All right, so um, you're looking for three more? Yeah, can I No, eight more. No, in patrol. Eight more. He's saying eight, eight total. Eight, 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 no, eight, eight new ones this year. Yeah, but it was five last year, so it's three more new no, ones. No, 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 eight, eight more, right? Eight, well, that's... No, we didn't get eight last year. No, no, no. You got five last year. You're looking five. for eight more this year. Eight marked. Not well, totally. but, but, but yeah, but I'm saying you, you have a cycle of vehicles. They go through the vehicles. So you're doing your three more beyond what you asked for last year. That's what I'm saying. Eight vehicles total. More. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought you meant. And that's the marked vehicles. That's yeah, the marked. marked patrol vehicles. So they take a beating. And, ju and to elaborate on that, um, a couple of years back, we had a four-year stretch where we only got two marked vehicles each year. And, you know, we understand that. Money was tight. The economy wasn't great. We had to do what we had to do, but that bill is coming due, and we're we're looking at vehicles now. Um, What's your mileage on them now? Well, our average, our front line vehicles, we have 16 total, and that's including the five that went on the road last month. I don't have their mileages factored into this. Um, however, the 11 other vehicles average 70,000 miles. We put about 30,000 miles a year on those. So by the time we get new vehicles. Two thirds of our front line is over a hundred thousand miles. And what's your cycle when you usually get the vehicles? Because I know if the budget gets approved, you're not getting those vehicles till months later. Am I right? We didn't get last year's vehicles until they weren't on the road until last month. Yeah, so it's almost a year later. Yeah. Um, okay. So we're we're again we're looking at many months before we see these vehicles, but we've got front line vehicles with 129,000 miles, 120,000, and then our uh, pool vehicles and road job vehicles. In they average 140,000. Oh, yeah. They average that. Um, our traffic section, um, 98,000, 113,000, 147,000, 92,000, yeah. 60,000, 156,000. It's... The our, business that we're in, it's unfortunately... It, it's, yes, it's a cost of doing business, and it's the wear and tear on these vehicles is incredible. Um, these are just the miles. That doesn't show the idle time. Um, the Detective Bureau, again, hasn't... I was going to yeah, the, the, the idle time is, is, is far it's more killer. significant. Sure. Than you, every time that you stop, the, the engine is running, the lights are going, Especially in the summer too. Or doing Take a beat. something else. How many hours those engines are running is, is a really a more realistic number sure. on the age of those vehicles. And, again, we've got vehicles that date back to 2000. Um, it's We've made... We've stretched them out. We really have, and that's our goal. We're not don't looking to. Don't they ever to put uh, those hour meters on? We don't have those, no. Can't you get those? I can certainly look into it. That would that would be a far more effective way to tell you how much wear and tear you you're putting on those cars. Yeah. That's, that's mileage. That's a great point, and that's something we can certainly look into. And I and I know in the detective bureau, you've always been under staff with the cars because you would really get the some really pitiful cars, and you love it. They're averaging 94,000 miles on their cars. They're always in horrible shape, to be honest with you. Well, That's a little overneeded. Just fix it. Do you want to address what we just bought? The, um... We used... We did use some federal forfeiture funds to purchase some new vehicles. However, they're undercover vehicles. That's not what we want to be responding to a burglary or an assault in. We don't want to give those vehicles up. Okay. Um, they're they're for undercover operations. In fact, we burned a number of undercover vehicles because we didn't have anything. And the detectives that had to take them to regular burglaries and whatnot. Then they're th right. then they're done. Yeah. Utility as an undercover vehicle. Okay. And that's the point I'm making. They are different vehicles, but we are addressing the need by saying we need the undercover, and okay. they just purchased. Absolutely. Uh, with the forfeiture funds. So hey. what, what I'm saying is, we're also um, being 
the, the department is trying to say utilize other funds for other reasons and, and doing it and getting it done in a timely fashion yeah. instead of waiting. I, I just don't like the, you know, it's, I, it's really shameful is the cycle of having to wait all those months before you get what you need yeah. equipment wise. And the other thing I just wanted to follow up on was with the, uh, the patrol vehicles. What are the idea vehicles to be used on the road that are that are practical and efficient for the your SUVs also? have worked out very well. Okay. Um, thank you. They offer more room to carry equipment. Uh, they have more room to carry big police officers, uh, which we have. Well, some of those. Do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and they're very good in the snow and so forth. They, uh, I've found them uh, to be a, a good choice. Uh, I see of a lot what's of the local departments, and you Most see departments yeah, many now. departments and are going to them now. Even state police, I see them yeah. all SUV. All right, yeah. that's good. And because we can get them under state contract, you'd be surprised we get them for. Yeah. Some some we get for ten thousand. Less. All the energy she has. Yeah. She's always right. trying to save some money. Right? Yeah, yeah. Smart car. <laughs> 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 so you prefer the SUVs, though, right? Yes. And for the investigation division, what are you going to use for, for you know, uh, unmarked unit? What smart cars. Yeah, smart cars. <laughs> uh, well, we're going to we're going to get SUVs uh, for them also. Also, okay. Yeah. okay. But these are for the DB. These are general purpose vehicles. They're, okay. You know, it, I. I just don't want us to be using what should be undercover cars for okay. general purposes. So it seems then, like our whole fleet sooner or later is transferring. It's to going that way, and later. until something better comes along. But we've been very, uh, very pleased. I'm sure you'll find somebody that's not. But uh, I think overall, we as a department have been very pleased with the performance okay. of the uh, Ford uh, SUVs. Good to hear. Okay, Chief. Uh, in 2014, you provided the council with a spreadsheet of all the vehicles that you have and the mileage. Uh, it had a lot of pertinent information on it. Can you just update that and provide that back to the council? Because I, I know we purchased uh, six units in 2014, and then uh, we did five of them in 15. So now we have the additional vehicles coming up. So it would be nice to see the replacement and the trending on it. So if you can just update that, we appreciate it. Absolutely. We may have that right now. And remember, too, that we were also using gov deals, so we're selling our, our used vehicles. Right. Making money there too, as well. And that finally got, got up and running. And, and Chief, uh, just changing topics, uh, I see the uh, the 911 communication center, we appropriated money for the upgrades. How is that working out for you? So far, so good. Um, w that's the officers, are, the officers are happy with it, and it's working out well communication-wise, no lag or delay. Are you, are you referring to the CAD system? Yeah, uh, we had budget 150000 for the upgraded 911 communications. Oh, Z-Tron. Okay. Yes, it's uh, it's going well. Okay. Do you find no further investment that's necessary for the communications? Is there any further investment we need to make for the communications? Uh, not at this time. We will eventually. Um, in fact, you'll you'll notice uh, a part of the budget is uh, uh, asking for uh, money to explore a new communication system. Our communication system is working, and it will keep working for several years to come. But uh, I want to act proactively and investigate what our options are moving forward uh, because we are nearing the uh, life expectancy of the system that we have now. And uh, I don't want to wait until it becomes a crisis. I want to proactively look at what our options are, and that's what we're uh, With looking into. With the communication into. system, just an additional question. Are we still having issues now we upgraded the 911 system? Are we having issues where people are calling, they live in Parsippany, but they're in a particular zip code and they're considered Morris Plains and they may not get response in a timely manner? Uh, are we having any issues with that, depending on geographically where a resident lives in response time? I don't believe we're having any, any issues in that area from homes. Uh, but if you, and I think everybody, well, I hope everybody knows this, if you use your cell phone to call 911, yes. uh, you wind up in Trenton. Yeah. State police powers, right? Yeah. Um, which is unfortunate. Hopefully, that'll be uh, straightened out at some time in the future. But right now, it's not we can control. Yeah, Chief, I just Thank have you. a question in reference. I know we had some issues with the uh, the fire departments with their communication and everything. Has that been pretty much squared away? And I know at one point there was, you know, we we had an issue with that interference or whatever. Is that pretty much done? It it is. We have periodically had it crop up again, but it it was an ongoing daily issue. It was intolerable. 
and uh, it's cleared itself up. And um, I, I'm, I'm reluctant. Yeah, I don't yeah I, I'm. Right. Yeah, I, I would be glad. That's that's why I paused. I, I would be glad to discuss this in detail with. But that process been completed. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, I, my, my, my main question was really, I just want to make sure the fire departments, their, their communication, you know, I don't want. And I'll answer that, on. Councilman. Um, it, it's, it's something we can't discuss right now because it's under investigation. But, um, yes, we've met with the fire districts and we've had, uh, the chief and I had meetings with them and they seem to be satisfied at this point. No, I knew the other thing you couldn't Maybe discuss. Keeper, yes. Um, all right, sure. yes. Any other questions from the council here? No. Okay. I'd like to entertain a motion to uh, open any questions up to the uh, public. So moved. Motion made by Mr. DePiro. Second. Second by Mr. Peluso. Roll call. <coughs> Mr. Carifi? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. Mr. Grignani? Yes. Mr. Peluso? Yes. Mr. Valori? Yes. Anyone from the public would like to come forward and speak to our police chief and his staff? Motion okay. to close. Okay, great. Second. <laughs> Motion made by Mr. DePiro, second by Mr. Griffey. Roll call. Yes. Mr. Griffey. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Ms. Grignani. Yes. Mr. Peluso. Yes. Mr. Valori. Yes. Okay. Gentlemen, great. Thank you, Chief. Thank you for everything. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what did you want to do? Lou, do you want to just let the public know that we're going to take a break? That'd be great. Take a break. We'll be back in about okay. 45 I, minutes. I know. It, was, it is in the schedule, yes, but we ran was. a little over. We started a little late. Yes, it was. So. Uh, I don't have to ask you twice. All right. With all the stuff we're covering. Okay, we're going to start. Oh, no, we just gave the police all the money for the vehicles. Just gave the police all the money. Welcome. I'd like to entertain a motion to open up uh, the rest of this hearing. Make a motion. Second. The department heads. Okay, <laughs> motion made by Mr. Griffey, second by Mr. Peluso. Roll call. Mr. Griffey? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. Ms. Grignani? Yes. Mr. Peluso? Yes. Mr. Valori? Yes. Okay, okay. we're going to ask Greg to. Yes, Greg. Good evening. Tell Good us evening. your magic. You can use the microphone. I will use the microphone. Okay, thank you. You know, just, just a minute of your time. First of all, I'd like to uh, personally, on behalf of all the men and women that work for me, Thank you for everything that was done last year. It's amazing to watch employees with the little bit of recognition, whatever it is, and actually it was quite significant for them, uh, you know, the raises and so forth that we gave out last year. It's been, I want to say, a remarkable improvement on just the way people act and the way they feel. There's still 5% that will never make a difference to it, but I'm, I'm telling you, it was... Uh, such a good move, and I personally, and I'm sure I'm speaking for all the people that work for me, thank you very much for that. So, well, let's hear that. Thank you. You're welcome. Where would you like to start? Road or sanitation? Is there a particular place you'd like start to start? Start with the uh, road, if that's okay. That's right. fine with me. Okay. Absolutely. Streets, Streets and roads. And roads. Right okay. I believe in your package you have, I've, I've given you a, uh, a table of thank you. Table of organization uh, to uh, see who works in the road division and who works in sanitation and so forth, um, which I thought was a good idea. To see. That way you can get an idea. Believe it or not, some of these people since I've done this have actually already retired. So we've had quite a bit of quite a few employees that have retired in the last six months or so.
so what are you looking questions? to do for upcoming uh, projects for this year? This year, uh, if you're not aware, and I'm sure you are, I introduced back in December, we put GPS in all the vehicles now. Um, I can tell you that, that we're still in the learning process. Uh, it is a phenomenal system. It tells me the good and the bad of the employees and so forth. Who's, you know, I can protect them on the road. You know, people are constantly blaming us for whatever happens to their cars out there. Okay. Snow plows or stones popping up. And they say, yeah, I saw this truck hit me at this time. We're in the other side of town, so it wasn't one of our trucks. Conversely, if you don't behave yourself out there, I know where you are. So, you know, you can't hide on me anymore. It also has a full diagnostic system for all the trucks. So it sends messages to the shop when there's something not right in a truck. It lets them know ahead of time. And so it's a phenomenal system. Even an oil change, when a vehicle is due for an oil change or something like that. Um, uh, we've turned the management team over in the mechanic shop, and it's just working. For, I'm sitting here this year much happier than I've been in a long time. I can tell you things are moving okay, nicely. Good. So, um, But other projects this year, and this one is actually tied more into the sanitation end of it, is we're still working on, and we brought this up last year, we're still working on a system to dispose of leaves internally in the township. Now, when I say that, it costs us a tremendous amount of disposal fees for us to move leaves, chop them up, and then send them out. All Where right. we send them out to? We send them out to a mulching company that turns around and sells the material. Ellen has worked tremendously on this. I have looked into it. Jimmy Walsh has also helped us, and the sewer plant is working with us now, looking for a place to do our own mulching. Okay, great. And uh, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but we pay, you know, three hundred thousand dollars a year. Really, that much? Oh yeah. yeah. And then they're selling it off. Yeah. So how much wow. would it, how much would a machine cost for us to do it? Well, I have the machine. Okay. The, the one thing I don't have is what is called a. I, I mean, there's a name for it, but it turns the material over. Almost. You know, it's like it picks it up and turns it over every week or so, so it just I guess it firmly. Okay. Yeah. But, you know, if we can do that inside, the game plan here is we can possibly start turning it around and giving it to... This is the final step I'm talking about. Okay. Jimmy has mulch piles, too, with wood chips and so yeah. forth and so on. I'm looking to give you the same mulch if you're a Parsippany resident that you can buy in Condorso, you know, Condorso or right. down in Cuomo or someplace like that. What's the uh, cost of that machine? Yeah. Uh, I haven't got that far. I got to get the property first. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> but I would. The machine that I bought was uh, in, uh, you know, together with Jimmy in the Parks and Forest. It was almost four hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and it's just saved us a ton of money. Believe me, it has. But this is the final step. Yes. Okay. This is the final step that'll take us to. Uh, let's leave the material right here for our own residents. Absolutely. All right. For the, for the people that compost. The other thing is. Um, we have, you know, we're, we're, we're the, the money that we're spending at this. Yeah. So, and now that we have Chad, I would have never thought we spent that much. Say, yeah, so he doesn't n forget to say it. We're also there's only two companies, and they they start creeping up the oh, price because yeah. we're, a, you know, there's no competition. Blind so yeah. Yeah. You know, it's funny. There's two companies, but every once in a while. One of the trucks from one company sneaks in, and the other truck from the other company. Sneaks. So you know, they're kind of working together. So I'm stuck. But anyway, um, I, 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 there's great plans for this. Save us a ton of money. Okay. Again, another scenario where the machine would probably pay for itself in a year or two years, really. What's your goal on this? You think by next year we'll have it? I hope we sit here next year and simply say we're you know ready to start the operation. And it's an operation that would obviously start in April or May after the winter season and, and so forth. Then. Over, like we want to lead. You know, you hire people and you say, what, what else are they doing? So we just hired the fellow Chad for our recycling. Yes, yes. So with all the, how busy we are, we said, this is a project for you. And I know um, Greg has spoken to him and said, run with this. We have parcels of land that might work that are close to where the, you know, down by the sewer plant. So we yes. have the sewer and the mulching already. And when we have the transfer station, so we keep all the, um, all our nice fragrances together. And okay. there's no residential problems. I so still say we can put them together. It smells better. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, well, that's one of the goals. Hopefully by uh, 2017, we'll be sitting here simply saying, full speed ahead. 
So, uh, and uh, it would be nice cost savings for the township. And for the residents, a nice cost savings too, obviously. So, But some of the goals we have are, are uh, that's a major one, I have to tell you. That's something that we have talked about for a good year now and uh, love to be able to say uh, we're up and ready. So, All right. All right. Would you like to review the operating budget, please? That'd be good. Yeah, I'm going to. As has been the last couple of years, the operating budget is very close to the year it was before. I, I, uh, I'm uh, somewhat of a financial guy who always compares on a three-year trend how things are doing, so I keep a close eye on it on a monthly basis. You won't see too many surprises. On the road division, the only thing I will tell you is we're still waiting for, if you look at the bottom of the operating on the first page there, page one of one, it looks like we <coughs> did not spend our full budget, but in there is not the condominium payments. There's a 250 or approximately 250. So if you put that in there, it'll be pretty much the same from year to year and so forth. And our goal for 2016 is just about the same budget. So. You will see a couple of accounts there that were not, other accounts that we did not spend money. Bus stop maintenance is a, if something goes wrong with a bus stop out there, I'm responsible for it. Okay. Luckily in 2015, we did not have any bus stop problems, so we didn't spend any money. But I have to leave some of these accounts here in case it's needed. So you'll see 2,000 every year and so forth and so on. I'm surprised you don't ask me about the snow budget. You're the expert. 2016, 2015-2016 uh, season was a blessing. Uh, you know we didn't use much, but who knows what 2016-2017 will be. We left it pr primarily the same in there. Um, we've had bad storms in October, November, and December, where we've spent $200,000, $300,000. So, even though we spent very little this year, we're going to, we could spend it next year. So we're not touching that. We're leaving it the same. Five goes into the trust. Remember that. Yes. snow is for snow is for snow. So this keeps building up so yes. the public understands it. Okay. And he buys uh, snow, uh, salt, right? I don't buy snow. I buy salt. I buy snow. I am fully stocked for salt. And I pay for it. Anybody <laughs> like a little salt or no? <laughs> you pay for it. You're right. Yeah, right. Any other questions on the operating? I believe we're going to talk about capital at the end. Yes. We'll, we'll, do, it. we'll do it when we do. Okay. We okay to move on to the next one? Sanitation? Yes, that's great. Last year, we go to a mic that didn't work last year, a mic that picks up everything. <laughs> Okay. All right, operating. Operating budget for sanitation recycling. Again, a couple of highlights from the operating budget. Uh, you'll go down there. Again, you'll see everything very close. We try to maintain, uh, you know, uh, our budgets from year to year as close as we did the prior year. Um, we did not buy more leaf bags. Yeah, 2015 we 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 had 50 000, or 40 thousand dollars in there, uh, anticipating that we might have to buy some. We did not. I had a lot. I, I had enough left over to cover the the orders and so forth. I have no leaf bags this year, so I have to buy 50 thousand dollars worth of leaf bags. That's why you see the 50 back in there again. So. And we did extend the time. People were very much, um, we, we, the mayor's office was selling them, and um, we were selling them from outside. So we did extend it, so that's where the banks went. Which is a good thing. Another area, if you look closely on here, is the uniform uh, account is up almost double from what we did in 2015. I finally got a little tired of guys wearing uh, cut-off shorts and so forth, so I decided everybody's to wear a uniform now. So in 2015, towards the end of the year, 
I think you're going to find it's looking like a department the way we should look like. Right. All right. Um, you know, if you play, you look the part, you play the part. And I think the guys look a lot sharper when they wear the uniforms. Obviously, we still have to wear the re yellow reflective vests wherever yes. we go. Uh, but under those vests will be uniforms and so That's forth great. and so Very on. Good. And, uh, yeah, it, you know, again, I see morale change when you look like you're supposed to be, a, you know, a sanitation or a road guy like or something like that. Like a professional. Absolutely. Exactly. So, so that budget's been up, and uh, the guys have shown interest. They're, they're coming in and measuring for the equipment and so forth and so on. So, License and permits in 2016, 2017. Uh, excuse me. Two, what year are we? We have license per permits. Every five years, I have to relicense all of the equipment, uh, all the sanitation trucks, and so forth. And this happens to be the five years. So you'll see $5,500 in there where we haven't spent anything the last year or two. This is the year where we have to spend it. Would it, would it be advantageous? in the years that you don't have your license renewals to put some money in there rather than I take do. you do i do i and and the reason for that already is the uh, every once in a while when i buy a new truck i have to put a license on it and so when i say a license i mean a permit from dep okay. uh and so forth that that has to, and i have to pay for those licenses so every year i'll, I'll spend generally a hundred and 150, 300, 600, depending on how many vehicles I get. How many vehicles I get, I'm sorry. Okay. So, but I do do that. So, but this is the year where everything has to be redone and so forth. Okay. Again, I'm happy to say tipping fees, the harder we work on recycling, it seems like every year it works. We, again, a price increase on the tipping fees, but no change in the budget from year to year. So, so that means we're positive getting some money back from the recycling or taking it out of the garbage stream, I should say. Yeah. So, No other questions? You people never ask me anything. Come on. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, the story is this. I maintain a good budget. You're doing a great job. Yeah. Here, yeah. You eliminated I, most of the questions by... Yeah. 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 I, I'm a fanatic when it comes to that. My background is finance, not in the public work sector, and some of you know that. But uh, I'm a fanatic about keeping things where they're supposed to be. So I scrutinize it you know, every month and every two months. But uh, And again, with the help of all the employees and so forth. duties between there and you can help Ann. You can help out Ellen and Ann. Seems like you have a lot Save of time on your hands. Excuse me. Hold on for a minute. Hello. <laughs> You're doing a great Frank, job as usual. Wait, you employees if you have oh, time? Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> wow, they give you up real quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you hear the bus go by yet? Me. Did it just go by again? That beeping noise. It's, it's okay. Noise. I keep telling you, it's okay. If they don't like me, I can go. <laughs> they like you. They want to get rid of us. No. <laughs> oh, is that right? That's what they're saying. <laughs> No, it's a uh, point now. <laughs> can I just say something, please? Oh, that's okay. right. It's tough when you have 100 employees with disciplinary matters. That takes up so much of my time. You can't imagine. But, yeah, you have uh, a lot going on. Yeah, it's, it's getting uh, better. It's, getting, it's better. getting better. Morale is up. We have the ABC committee. Yes, yes that's right, we do. But uh, anyway, any other questions? Frank, how are we making out with uh, Lake Hiawatha? We usually have several residents that have concerns about Lake Hiawatha. To clean up and the garbage collection. No, he isn't. That's. I Does that tell you something? He's not back there. Um, I threatened Chad when he took the job that he would have to deal with Mr. Humdak. He has gone above and beyond. He is doing a great job, um, much better than my last person. Although he did a good job also. It's it's not something you can tell them once and they'll remember it. The, the store owners and so forth. You got to stay on them. You got to stay on them constantly. And uh, I know about you. If you drive down North Beverly Road, it looks pretty good now. These I saw people sweeping this morning. Store owners out there sweeping, and uh, I was impressed. But uh, it's watched very carefully. We have just completed the we've completed the ticket. 
We don't want to do that. I mean, that's your last yeah. choice. Absolutely. I yeah. don't want to do that. I don't want to have Chad in court because I've every ticket just written. You would think that three or four times that would work. Um, but that's why it's important to have somebody down there all the time because you got to keep going after him and reminding him and so forth and so on. But uh, and I know the mayor. Yeah, yeah you right. have it. You have it in place. Absolutely. Yeah, um, I'll put this on the record. Lake Hiawatha was not as bad as was being portrayed. Number one, I could tell you that. I would go down there on a Sunday, Saturday morning. It was clean. This and that. I mean, some of it, in my opinion, uh, is just is over exaggerated. But that doesn't mean you don't have to maintain it. Yeah, you absolutely. still got to keep up and stuff like that. Um, and and the fact is that we, you know, what's going on with Chad? Thank God we hired Chad because he's proactive um, in that area over there. Um, and Lake Hiawatha, there's, there's, I got a whole plan, which we'll discuss in the future for Lake Hiawatha, uh, that Justin, Elise, and I are going to speak about. Uh, not this year, probably next year. All right, good. Okay. That's the 2016 story. I'll be more than happy to talk when we go over capital with uh, Justin on my capital right, great. accounts, okay? And keep up the good work. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Greg. No, we have a lot of questions of you. We've been waiting. Where is the question? <laughs> this is going to be a long meeting. It's not. Okay, you want to start though, just with the operating budget. Yeah, which, now yeah, and then we'll go into cap capital. Absolutely. Is probably the, and then the bulk tell us the what questions. projects are coming up. You know, you yes, know, that's great. Okay. Good. Um, on the operating budget end, uh, we're pretty much holding the same line. It's um, within about five hundred dollars from last year. Okay. Um, I'll go over some of the the differences or the major differences, um, which really there there aren't many. Uh, it, a sl Should I go into that or? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, She's funny. Vehicle equipment. Uh, there's a slight increase in that. Um, we are purchasing. Uh, we actually a vehicle will be coming uh, within the next week or two, which was actually from last year's budget, um, which is replacing an inspector's vehicle. This is more. The increase really was for some of the equipment that it needs. Um, the lockable toolbox, the bed liner, that sort of stuff. Okay. So, so that's why there's a little bit of an increase um, in that line item. And you're only getting the vehicle now after a year later. Duh. Uh, it's it's been this process is yeah. brutal. Yeah. Okay. Uh, most of the other line items are staying the same. Microfilming we did bump up by about two thousand um, dollars. Just in our office, we do get an extraordinary uh, large amount of paper. Um, not only um, uh, regular documents, the eight and a half by eleven, um, but our plans, our specifications, any private work that's done that's approved by the boards we get that a uh, copy of those plans then all the inspector reports so it, it creates volumes of paper okay. um four thousand dollars was covering it we're actually running out of room now so we had up that this year just so we can microfilm more just to make room for um you know future projects okay. so that, right. that's the reason for that uh increase in that line item question on the uh the consultant fee uh, object code 271 i'm just looking at the um the backup description on the next page, mm -hmm. um, it says the National Flood Insurance Program Community Rating Certification System. Um, can you tell us what's going on with the uh, FEMA right now with the seat recertification? Because we understand that they were out in certain parts of Parsippany and Lake Hiawatha doing measurements and everything during the summertime, but we haven't heard any feedback if they're changing the, the elevation maps or the 500 year flood zones or anything like that. FEMA um, has been working on these maps for the last. Um, I'd say better part of probably eight or nine years. Okay. Uh, matter of fact, they were originally, Morris County was originally supposed to get the maps in 2010. Um, then once Irene hit um, and Sandy, that kind of slowed things down and they actually looked at what the impact was by, from the, that flooding and had to make some modifications to their computer model. Um, then they for, uh, focused most of their effort on shore points. So. Uh, most of the shore uh, counties have their maps already adopted uh, and are in use. Morris counties, uh, we just received our preliminary maps recently. Um, we are in the process of comparing them to what we are, are currently using, which is from 1986. 
in many cases it's very close to what we um, currently have there are some areas that the flood zones are changing um, it's increasing and decreasing so you know you'll see a, a little change both ways um, the <coughs> county actually is helping us uh, and they're going to provide us with an overlay which will show what was the 86 uh, flood line and what is the new one so it's a little bit easier to identify um, the changing areas are you going to be having public sessions at all they once once it gets further along we're, we're still uh, about a year year and a half out um, with any adoption it's still an internal uh, process although anytime someone comes in for information on flood zones for their property we show them both maps because we don't want them to think um, you know, we're working off the 86 plan now and if there is a potential change we don't want them to be uh, caught in a year or two from now so we will show them what the future might be uh, based on these maps but right now we're still working off the old maps because there, there may be some public pushback that don't agree with the realignment do you feel that we have to budget for any legal expense uh, because we may have to defend the position that those areas may not be that, what they recommend? That's, uh, 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 what we're doing is comparing the maps and comparing it to our historic information. And if we see some problem areas uh, or questions, we bring that up to FEMA at this time. Individual lots, uh, if there is a problem, there, there's still a mechanism in place and will be once the new maps are adopted where uh, map amendments can be made. And it, it's up to the property owner to provide documentation. So they'll probably have to hire a surveyor to uh, provide uh, survey information for their lot. And then there's a process where it would get submitted to FEMA uh, for those amendments. And they would review that. So that, that mechanism would still be in place. And when are you uh, going to open that up to the public? Uh, once um, FEMA says it, it's uh, time to open up to the public. Um, we're really not at that stage to publicize it, although um, FEMA will shortly be um, having these maps available online. So a homeowner can go in and there will be a portal and you, all you have to do is put in your address and it will zoom into your property and it will show you all the, um, the flood related information for that property. So is the, the fee of 25000 for the consultant regarding this matter we're discussing? No. No. The, the, what this fee is for is we're looking to get back into the community rating system program. Um, it, it, the acronym is CRS what that does is by being a member of, of that and, and um, being involved the more the town does for flood proofing properties for uh, getting education to homeowners about uh, flooding protecting their properties uh, it, it's, it's really a whole litany of things you can do as a, as a community you get rated uh, based on how much involvement you have and it's uh, from 1 to 10 10 being um, the least benefit to um, uh, property owners who have flood insurance uh, one being the best most towns are in the the 7 to 9 range once you get lower than that there's an extraordinary amount of work that's involved uh, hundreds of hours of documentation and education and and other processes um, that uh, you, you can benefit from and usually every step that you go down is a five percent reduction in flood insurance rates for homeowners so this is so what, this is the conversation we had last year with the budget processes that I asked if we had the rating system to really support lowering the uh, uh, the, the cost for insurance for the homeowners and if we have this in place this could potentially lower the cost for flood insurance as a that it, it will lower theirs uh, depending on what uh, ranking we are ranking by you know whatever that five percent value is um, so if we're at a um, you know a nine it's a five percent uh, reduction eight is a ten percent and so on but you don't see this hurting our community residents where the ranking is going to be a number that's going to affect their premiums and make it higher no 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 they, it, it, there's no negative effect um, for a resident it's only a positive okay, and good. and it's only a way to um, help educate and, and protect the town. So okay. there's just a benefit to um, uh, flood insurance uh, homeowners Great. or Thank property owners. Appreciate and, it. And this information I was able to garner from going to in November, uh, last November at the, at the league, 
and put you in touch with a whole bunch of folks that uh, you were the consultants. Yeah, we we were a member years ago, and it was uh, felt that the work that was involved may not be worth the benefit that property owners were really seeing. Um, and it sort of died out. Uh, actually, uh, shortly after I um, was hired, we were looking into getting back into it. And then, of course, Irene hit and the involvement with, uh, you know, the elevations and acquisitions and a lot of the FEMA work consumed a lot of our time. And, and that's why we kind of regrouped with Ellen's help and we decided we're going to go with the consultant to get this back off the ground. Once the, the program is up and running, then we'll be able to maintain it in-house. But it's that initial push in getting back into the program. When did we drop it? How long ago was that? Uh, I want to say in 2007 or 2008. It was in that time frame. Right. And the reason why we dropped it was? Uh, I, I don't know. It was before me. I, w I don't have all the details. But I, it, it's my understanding that, the, again, the, the work that's involved from a town's end, um, it, it, there's a lot of time and work that, that's involved. And they weren't sure if it was really worth the benefit because I think they were only at a nine at the time. So it was a five percent savings on the flood insurance, which at that time, you know, the insurance rates were fairly low. It's not like they're what's happening now where you're getting that increase every year to get up to the full actuarial actuarial rate. So right. um, okay. now you'll really see the big benefit. Great. Well, thank you. I received a phone call several weeks ago from a consulting company. Um, that's been hired by FEMA and the Army Corps of Engineers to study all of the tributaries to the Passaic River um, and, uh, and I guess the effects of the, of the two hurricanes. But the reason they called me was because I date back to when we built the flood wall and the pumping station and someone gave them my name and says, he's the only one that's been here long <laughs> enough to have that kind of a history. So. Uh, I, I answered all of their questions. I wonder if that's going to be part of what they're doing, the study. No, the, the study uh, and the new flood maps aren't related to what the Army Corps of Engineers is working on. The Army Corps is working on um, flood protection measures for the entire Passaic River Basin, uh, which would include the Rockway River and, and, and Parsippany. Um, I've spoken to them several times. Um, they're trying to get an idea on exactly what our protective measures are, meaning the, the levee and wall system, um, what the level of protection is. That's what they were uh, uh, associated with. And I had provided them with information about a month or so ago as well on, on that. So it, what they're trying to do now is compile it. And the, the last I heard, which was uh, I was at a meeting about two years ago, they had narrowed their uh, options down to about five different uh, plans, uh, one being that flood tunnel that had been talked about since the 80s and 90s. Um, there are uh, others which includes dredging, uh, walls and levees and pumps. Um, there's uh, about five different options. Um, one of them, which is kind of uh, concerning, is uh, a no build option, which I, I don't ha even understand how that's still an option on the table. I think that we're at a point make, something has to be done. That doesn't make sense to me, but neither does that tunnel. I mean, you're, we, 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 try, we need water in the ground. We need detention, some kind of detention for the water, some place for it to go where it seeps back into the ground, not just so it goes down to... The, the, there are pros and cons with every one. Um, yeah. I, I think that's something we can discuss. Uh, you know, I can t tell you at least the information I have on, which is somewhat limited and more yeah. uh, just the information that they've been putting out. If we push that all but. through a tunnel, that's cost billions of dollars. Uh. Yeah, I will say I found studies that went back to 1903 that the Army Corps was working on. Wow. Uh, so they've been studying this for 112 years, 111 years. Those guys must be getting tired by now. Well, <laughs> and, and that's my point. That's the, that's they, the joke about the Army Corps engineers. They said, get one project, they'll yeah. on Oh, you definitely, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mike, you remember that? <laughs> <laughs> Say, that's good. You but yeah, that, that's actually a, a completely different uh, project that's being worked on. Uh, just to discuss a little bit about uh, grants. I know last year we talked about the uh, the Rockaway River, the lower part of it. We were entitled to a grant about 300000 
Um, that came through? Uh, that came through. Uh, we took bids. Um, actually, the uh, contracts were just signed, so uh, we're looking to go to uh, construct or work uh, shortly. Unfortunately, with the rain now, the rivers are up, so we're going to have to wait a little bit. It's really just a desnagging project. It's it's a matter of just getting into the uh, Rockway River and some of the tributaries and pulling out all the uh, fallen uh, vegetation, uh, opening it up from the snags and, and debris. Did we also get a grant from the Whippany River as well? We did. That project, um, that was 168000 That was managed by Hanover. Right. Um, most of that work is complete now. They have uh, uh, some little uh, cleanup items they have to do. Uh, and as a matter of fact, the contractor that did the Whippany River project was the one that was awarded the project uh, for the Rockway. And is there any other grants that we should be applying for right now? For There's, for this type of work, there aren't any that I'm aware of um, that would handle, um, you know, stream cleaning, desilting, that sort of thing. But we identified the worst blockages right now? Yes. We have. Yeah. Well, fortunately, the, the way I structured the bid documents, um, I showed in aerial view areas um, that need to be desnagged because we had so many uh, trees down and, and, and snags, it was too difficult to identify each one. So what I did is I put in areas, and we had about eight or nine different areas, and I asked for a bid price based on an area. Uh, and fortunately, the, the bid prices came in um, very reasonable. We're able to award based on the entire project so every area will get hit all the snags will be removed and that's that's for dead and fallen trees nothing if it's leaning and it's still alive we can't touch it um, if it's impeding the waterway we can trim branches so we'll cover some of that though as well and are you cleaning out any of the, uh, the, the piping that goes under 46 and 80 into the Troy Meadows area no that that's the DOT's responsibility we've been asking them to do it, um, is there an ask out there right now? There, there has been. Uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, as of about two months ago, I had asked. Um, we're How looking for help with it. How long goes of Ten years by now? More than that. More than that. Of Nanny at their own expense got permission. Took them six months to get permission. Three hundred to, to do the state's job. Yes. And and clean out that tunnel. But I more than ten years solid. now. So it's, 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 it's overdue. Yeah. Because we start to see it back up right now into the um, the uh, U-turn, well, sort of a U-turn where the Walmart Steakhouse is, and it closes down the highway, which makes it very difficult and dangerous for the residents and the police department as well. And then we've also seen some flooding at Wellington Plaza. So um, by de-snagging that area, that was a concern. Uh, but yeah. under, understand it's like one or two machines that the state has, and we have to be put on a waiting list. Could, could you look into that for us? Uh, I'm going to reach out to every contact I have. Uh, I've even asked when they, the contractor and, and the resident engineer, when they were working on the Route 80 widening project, if they could get their guys in there to at least open up the the pipes uh, where it goes into the, the, the swamp. Right. And we yeah. couldn't get them to do that. So. Uh, we're going to do everything we can to get them to do it. Great. Thank you. I know you have a lot of projects going on within the town in regards to the roads and the curbing. Can you tell me what's going on on Beverwood Road? Yeah, that's, mm. I think we need to get into that now because we're, we're Okay. Yeah. Uh, Beverwick Road, we received a $250,000 grant from the DOT yes. for uh, improvements. And the application was for um, uh, road improvements, so milling and resurfacing predominantly. Um, some minor drainage improvements, uh, putting those new stormwater compliant heads in, uh, restriping, repairing curbs and sidewalks uh, where they were damaged or handicap ramps yeah. really, yes. okay. uh, and curbing. Um, and then subsequent to that, uh, there has been a request uh, to investigate uh, replacing all the curbing with granite block curb. Uh, I looked at the cost uh, to do that, and it was roughly about 300, an additional 300,000 to replace all the concrete curbs with granite block curbs. Um, that wasn't what was originally budgeted, um, one with the grant e or with the capital budget um, of last year, because it, it was in last year's capital budget for the uh, North Beverwick improvement. So um, if there will be a change, one, I have to make the, the scope change with the DOT, which is um, 
not always uh, not a very tedious thing, but just some paperwork that's Personally, required. I have no interest in replacing curbs with curbs. Okay. Yeah, the, the the plans are pre pretty much ready to go. We're about eighty percent done. Um, I really just had it on hold until we had a discussion about curbing and um, what direction to go in, uh, and then we can finalize the plans. Well, those, those curbs are, are uh, damaged. There's ones that there's sections of it that needs to be replaced. Actually, I, I saw some of our people turn off some some lines in the street, and uh, you know it was affecting some of the curbing as well. So right. if we're going to replace the curbing, can there be any schedule where we can replace them with granite one section at a time over a period of time? Yeah, that would be a nice. Idea. Now it. it, it it really needs to be done before the paving gets mm -hmm. done. It does, yes. It, it does because the, the paving abuts right up to the, the curb. Goes underneath. What, even you know, as much as you try to work from behind the curb and pull it back, right. you're still going to damage the asphalt. Um, so if, if something's going to be done, it really needs to be done before we pave uh, because otherwise you, you'll just tear up that asphalt. So are you going to put in a request to, ch to change the scope of the DOT or? If if that's uh, the direction we're going to go in, I, I would have to make that request with DOT because they they the portion that they're paying for is more so the handicap ramps, um, m making sure they're in compliance. So it will be a, a slight change in the scope uh, because we just anticipated uh, repairs to the concrete curb, right. not a full replacement. Can I just give some input? And Mr. Zapiro, I, I respect what you're saying too in regards to the uh, curbing. I know I went out there and met with you on Bedwick Road, and I discussed it with the mayor and Ellen. And you know, we all have our separate opinions. But I know that certain areas of Bedwick Road with the curbing that's sagging, we're not matching. There's issues with draining. It doesn't look appealing. The only thing I would just say is the road going into Lake Hiawatha, which will eventually go to our beautiful library back there, and hopefully our superior. Uh, no country club. I just think that, in my opinion, that section of town has always been kind of, you know, uh, not kept up with the way that it should be, and it's a major artery going into the town. You know, you know, we always, you know, claim that sometimes our downtown area isn't appealing as Denville sometimes has this little downtown area there where Ellen lives, <laughs> and you know, you know, we do when we do have the parades in town. It seems to me that. That area of town is much more packed with individuals because it's more of our focal point of the, the town. And I'm just, in my my interest, I think, of the town and that area down there, between the flooding of what those folks went through and just a lot of um, hard times, if we could do anything to beautify that area coming from, you have a new bank going in there on the corner there, and, you know, it's a major artery. If we could find the money somehow to put in those curbings, to really make it that much more appealing. And I know that it would affect three of the council members here, you know, for their side of town. I just think that that side of town really needs to get that beauty added to it. Are That's just my opinion. Are you talking about $300,000, which we don't have? Yeah, I know. I'm just saying, even if we did sections of it, because with Belgian block. Can't do okay. I just want to pick so, up what Councilman Valori is saying. You know, this is the gateway to Lake Hiawatha. You know, we, we have an investment going in with the Noel Country Club, a future investment as well. We want to be the gateway that when you come into our community to get to the Country Club, to go play golf, to do shopping, uh, you want an impression that shows that this is a, a quality part of our community, a quality downtown area. You know, to invest in, in, in curbing. Uh, that's granite is, is a lifetime. It doesn't deteriorate either as, as well as the mortar does with the salt. Uh, but it's an investment that would probably pay itself back as well. I just want to pick up on that also from the new bank that's going in that Councilman Valori said. Um, I noticed that the sidewalks stop um, at a few homes before there. And there's a lack of walkway. walkway and we do have a, a temple in the area as well. And we do have shopping um, in those particular areas. I'm just a little fearful that uh, we may have residents that could be in danger by, by not walking on a sidewalk that's not there because we stopped at a certain point. Has there been any investigation as to the continuation of that sidewalk, which was pavement, uh, to, the, to the new bank put, being put in? And is the new bank putting a sidewalk in as well? Because I've seen they put some retaining walls, and it looks like they block people from actually walking now uh, up, to the, up to the corner to uh, cross safely. The bank 
uh, we'll be putting sidewalk in along North Beverwick Road good. Uh, okay. along their entire frontage, so that from Ball to right, 46. Good. That's part of their um, so can their we project improvement. That additional block and connect the sidewalks because right now the sidewalks aren't connected. Oh, uh, we can look into it. I know. I don't know if it's between Ball and Summit or it's, it's if it was Hawkins. further north. Hawkins and Hawkins. Hawkins. Oh, I'm sorry, Hawkins. Hawkins. And Ball. Um, Hawkins and Ball. There there were two properties that the right of way goes essentially up to the curb line. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, several years ago, we looked at. Uh, purchasing additional right of way, and the property owners weren't willing to um, sell it to the town. Is it one of those houses, the abandoned house, the eyesore? It could be. You talk about the approach to Lake top. Hiawatha. It, yeah, I'd be more yeah. concerned about getting that eyesore torn down. It's been vacant for three or four years, maybe more. And right across the street, there's a broken telephone pole that's been there for three, four, or five years. Those are eyesores that I'd like to see get gotten rid of right away. Well, that's spending three hundred thousand dollars. Well, I bet you one of the reasons they don't want to sell it right away is because they don't want sidewalks. Yeah. Oh, well, they have to maintain it then. Yeah. <clears throat> there is sidewalks on the other side of the street from. Yes. Yes. From there is, but you need to cross the right. dangerous road where about twenty-three thousand cars pass by on a daily basis. Yeah. Right. Well, it's like Frogger jumping across yeah. the road. I'm just afraid for the safety because at least if the bank is putting at least one block right. of sidewalk in, if we can continue where where Ball Road is over there, uh, that one block. And connect both sidewalks it, it would make a lot of sense I'll, I'll look into the right-of-way issue there i'm not sure if that's where the issue was or if it was a little bit further north uh it might be but we can look into that um, great I, I would make a suggestion now that you know how we're going to vote for some yeah. while, while um you are while you know justin is here i think on this one because we're going to need some lead time yeah at least some lead time. Yeah, sure. mm -hmm. to let us know you know to, to take a vote but yeah what those, yeah, yeah what direction we're going to it. that'd be great me? yeah and what direction you're going i just to get yeah. from an engineering perspective if yeah. you're going to put in new roadway they're you know blacktop to you know you're going to have curving there or you know curbs that are uh cement that are sagging we we actually looked at it together when mm -hmm. we we're out there uh you know is it is it cost effective to rip up a road and then not replace what's in there and then if you piecemeal it in it looks that much more undesirable, but you do have curbing there that is sagging. You can see it's not even. There's not true right. continuity. So if we, as a council, the governing body, you know, if we have to put it to vote on that, to me it just would look so much nicer to really brighten that area up down there because I think it's long overdue, and hopefully we can find the money somehow. Mr. Well, it would be, we'll it talk it would about be in your budget. It would be yeah. In the capital budget. And that's how you find the money. Right. Mr. President, I have I have a question. Mayor, you mentioned um, that you have long-term plans for Lake Hiawatha itself. Right. Do they include putting the granite curbing in? Well, when I, when, when you, when my plans, well not my plans, we really, we just started to discuss it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. would be when you enter Lake Hiawatha, right by Food the Town? TD Bank. Okay. And okay. right where Food Town is, because that's, that, it's not, that's when it becomes Lake Hiawatha. Yes. Actually, TD Bank is parsippany. You know, but right when you get to that right yeah, there, right, right, that's, right the that's when it becomes Lake Kiawatha. Yeah. So, and, you know, um, Justin and I spoke about the paving. We'll stop it. What, what was it again? Well, right in the bank. By Condit. Yeah, by Condit. That's when we would stop the paving to come up with the, the you know, the refurbishment of Lake Kiawatha. Because mm -hmm. okay. so, I didn't want to have it paved all the way through. And then, again, we got to rip it up. That's what we didn't yeah. want to do. Okay. Good points. But are you are you planning on doing concrete curbing, or are you well, possibly? I, I would. You see, this we, you don't understand, and I don't mean this bad way. No, no, go ahead. Concrete curbing, and I found this out today myself. And um, the granite is specific is, is basically the same cost. Okay. Okay. The difference between the project you have at North Pebbrick Road is it's re it's repairing the existing cement curbing that you have now. So that's why it's only that's why it would cost so much money because then you'd have to tear all that curbing down all North Beverly Road to, to to create new curbing. Well, that's this grant is only to repair the, um, you know, the, the handicap spots and stuff like that. Now, if we did cement, if so we did we, we did cement or co what do you call it? cobblestone, it would be the same specific almost the same cost. Would be no different. And so what's it? A, a dollar a square foot more, something like that. Well, you can explain it better, but 
when we come into the Lake Hiawatha section, we have the sign and stuff. That's when that's the area I'm looking and going all the way down to. Um, but we still have it. We don't have a plan yet. We want a line, the parking area with parking spots and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. So. All right. So, I, so in other words, just, you know, yeah. you, do you want to make a decision tonight? No, no. This is. No. Just, I okay. just want to at least, you know, put everybody's opinion okay. on record. Okay. And we all felt about it. And if right. we can afford it, we'll we'll try to do it. Okay. So, all, and I will just I'm say. I'm done asking questions. Okay, but. <laughs> I guess I'm done too. But uh, no, what I'm what I'm going to say is, just know that when when uh, Justin was talking about the plans are you know pretty much done, it did not have you know that in it. Absolutely, so yes. um, you know it, sooner than later, if we can come to terms with what direction we want to go, you know we we will we'll communicate and we'll that. We'll have more to, dialogue. Yes, we're going to have yes. more dialogue. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. When I say Parsippany, like uh, well, let's face it. It's all participating. Absolutely. So. I just felt that section of town yeah. deserves yeah. a little bit more. Okay. I think. Um, is there any that. other capital project that you in particular have a task a question on? No, not at all. Okay. Uh, just, I have yeah. a general question. Um, the residential streets, can you tell me um, what is the schedule for repaving? Because we have residents saying that some streets are being paved, some are not, some are in disrepair. Um, and is there a, a list of what streets that will be paved? We have a preliminary list um, done. And w what happens every year, we put a list together of the roads that need improvement. Um, and we almost have two sets. So one is a list of streets that need reconstruction, um, widening, drainage improvements. They don't have curbing. So that's sort of one set of, of uh, streets. And those have to go to uh, consultants to have surveys done, designs. Uh, it's a lot more involved. Then we have uh, a list that we put together every year, usually right after the winter, uh, depend because the winter can really drastically change a roadway uh, in a couple months, depending on the freeze and thaw cycles, how much salt's being put down. The deterioration can really um, be pronounced uh, over a, a winter. So once we come out of that winter, we evaluate the streets, put a, a list together, and typically, there's probably um, one half to two times the number of streets that we can physically do in a, in a given year, physically and monetarily. Um, so what we do is once we have that list preliminarily done, we, we do have it for this year. Once I know where we stand with the budget, then I sort of back into the worst streets and I try to make sure we hit every area of town as well. Um, just so we're not slighting uh, areas. So it's sort of a combination of which are the worst, let's make sure we, we are doing some work in each of the uh, sections, and that's the list of streets we finalize. Um, but that's all predicated on uh, how much money is uh, going to be in the budget and when the budget is adopted, um, and then we move forward with that. So I think right now we're probably looking at maybe an August, September um, a paving schedule at this point. Okay. So thank you. Yes. When I when I talk about Lake Hiawatha section, also you haven't been to Ocean City, Maryland. No, I haven't. Okay, no. So yeah, I've been there. <laughs> okay. Well, they have the sidewalks that look like brick cobble. It yes. Looks, very that's nice. what we're looking to do over there as well. Okay. To make it look really presentable. That is a walkway. You can't miss it. No. So pedestrians would have to stop. You know. So not pedestrians. No. Drivers. <laughs> I know where you're at with this. It's, getting, it's, a, it's a long day. I right, turn it let's back up. Let's yeah. add one more thing. The, the, on uh, Hawkins Avenue, where they have the temple, the Jewish temple. Yes. Okay. That that temple has been asking me to put a traffic light there for 20 years. Yeah. Since they went there, um, and I'm telling you, you can't put a traffic light there. It would never be approved. Right. Okay. But as the compromise, and I, I, I know I mentioned this to you and I mentioned this to the mayor, put a walking, those red red bricks walking across so people know it's gonna, they're going to cross there. Yeah, they good walk, idea. Yeah. They walk to the temple, you know, when they right. go. Yeah, good idea. And, and, yeah. It, and that's a tough place to cross, any place <coughs> near there. Um, so We could put could pedestrian it. crossing signs up to there, too, with the yellow and so yep. forth and so on. That might, so. Yeah, yeah, that, oh, but, but if they have the walk, the, the, Red brick walkway. That'll, that'll, that'll be classier nice, too. That'll be classier. One thing, uh, uh, you know, uh, about putting sidewalks in, 
you know, if you put sidewalks everywhere, then you become a city. Uh, I don't know if that's what we want to be here in Port Sipony. That's what, and a lot of I get that question a lot from residents. They want sidewalks everywhere. Well, then your land, your landscape starts to change in the town. You go away from the suburban look to come into like a city look. And of course, you have sidewalks. But if you'll find out when you start putting sidewalks in, we've had this problem in Pawnee Ave. Everybody wanted sidewalks there, but guess where they wanted them? Th this side one on that side, and this one one on that side. And that's one of the you know the difficulties of putting sidewalks everywhere in yeah. Port Maybe major areas where you got to walk, like the Councilman Puzo said, it makes a little bit more sense. But other than that, I wouldn't want to put them throughout the town. Okay. No, I'm in agreement with that as well. We would not want to put them throughout the town. Right. Um, but just to continue that one particular section because it starts and stops, and it could be a safety hazard, particularly right. because there is a, a religious group down there with a, a temple that does use that sidewalk. Um, it would be beneficial to connect both of them together. Lou, I'm going to turn it over to you for yes, questions. Uh, I'd like to move forward with uh, you know the, uh, the department here. Any other questions or concerns on your part that you'd like to address with the council? No. Council members, anything else? Nope. All right. I'd like to entertain a moment of, of I'd like to entertain <coughs> a motion to silence. Silence. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Okay. I'm getting tired here. Second, Grignani. All right. Motion made by Mr. Karifi, second by Mr. Grignani. Roll call. Ms. Carifi? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. Ms. Grignani? Yes. Mr. Peluso? Yes. Mr. Valori? Yes. Great. I'd like to, uh, anybody from the public would like to come forward to uh, ask some questions or have some concerns? Okay, I see not. Motion like to close. Great. Second. Second. Motion made by Mr. DePiro, <laughs> second by Mr. Carifi. Roll call. Ms. Carifi? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Okay. Thank Good you. Night, Thank you. Good night. Ms. Thank Grignani? Good night, yes. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Peluso? Being informative. Thank you very much. Yes. Mr. Valori? Yes. I'm leaving. <laughs> I know. Here's your hat, Greg. Get out. We went easy on you tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Keep up the good work. Thank you, gentlemen. Work on those curbs. Oh, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <laughs> but he talks fast, so he gets twice as much. I can't hear you. You can. He's going to pass out some uh, additional information. No, they're good. No breaks. First, you take a five minute break. Oh, you are? Okay, yeah. you need yeah. a break. We, don't have, we didn't have them coming out. It, uh, you know. Yeah, the, what we did was on. on uh, the structure of this meeting and, and what uh, you asked as council president of. Uh, the mayor and myself and uh, yeah, I just want to put on the record for the public, which <laughs> not here now. Not here right now, record, but yeah. we have other department heads. We have public. Yes. Oh, yes. I'm sorry about it's that. Yes. This whole budget meeting was based on the key department heads to discuss the budget, and again, this is just an overview of um, what our responsibilities are for coming up with a budget that's going to be satisfactory to us and to uh, you know the taxpayers and if there's any other question concerns we as council members all have an obligation to reach out to um, either the mayor the BA or the CFO in regards to any other members that weren't being represented within you know the township precipity in regards to you know creating this budget so again you know it's a very tedious process that's why we put a finance committee in place to work with the BA and the CFO, CFO and the mayor in regards to prepping this budget for tonight's meeting. But uh, again, like anything else, there's time constraints. So that's why we start at four o'clock today. We'll probably want to go until at least maybe nine, maybe even 10 tonight. But we're trying to get a good overview of how we're gonna vote on a budget that's going to be you know, uh, cost effective for the taxpayers and be reasonable to you know, obviously sustain the services that we need in the town. Any other questions, concerns? Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, next on the agenda. Okay, um, before we uh, get to Dean, I just want to, um, the Parcher EMS, this year, myself and um, Alan Sandman, we decided to make EMS, it's pretty much not its own department, but we took it out of the community center, and now it's, even though it's there and resides there, it's now under the administration, meaning now, basically, Dean is the head of all EMS, he's the, he's like, he's a, he's the director. Yes. So we elevated Dean up, and the reason why we did that was because we realized that this had a, this had to be different than 
answering down to the community center. We needed to have control of it as, as well. And Dean has done a great job. Um, and as you know, how busy it is in the daytime here. Well, that being said, I felt very comfortable having Dean answer to the administration and to the mayor. So, and you know, we elevated him to a level where he's he's the department head there. Okay. So, would you like to add anything? No, not at this time. I'm going to turn it over to Dean um, to uh, to talk to uh, the handout he has and uh, the up and coming things that uh, we're creating this uh, department division on. No pressure. Right? Okay, no pressure. Uh, just to uh, start with, to echo what Greg said, um, all of the uh, folks in EMS are very grateful for uh, the salary restructure last year. A uh, long time coming, and, and again, greatly appreciated. And uh, as Greg said, morale, it's it certainly sees that uh, when they know that their employer cares about them, uh, you know, they're very appreciative. So uh, I definitely want to say uh, thank you with that to start. Uh, regarding the handout, it is basically my standard handout that seems to have worked. So why reinvent the wheel? It kind of gives you guys a, just a, a quick glimpse of what's going on so it doesn't take up your time but gives you the highlights. Uh, as I said, I didn't put it in my fancy cover that I usually do because I didn't want to mess up the binder uh, flow that you have going here. So I figured it was uh, better to do that. Uh, we continue to respond up to Greystone, uh, including the cottages and the, the facility itself. Uh, as we stated a few years ago and every year, that's something I don't think that will ever go away as long as it's in the town. Uh, you know, there are some times when it is an emergency and they do truly need us, and there are some other times when uh, the staff up there doesn't exactly know what's an emergency versus what could wait for their transport company. And we do try to work with them to keep an open dialogue. Um, but uh, we also don't dwell on it because sometimes getting the right people to the table there would be... Uh, a long task that we could be working on for a long time. Uh, other than that, uh, you know, the revenue continues to sustain the department uh, as it has in the past years. Uh, we keep a close eye on that. And then uh, basically the breakdown otherwise is just the frequency of calls. Uh, one thing on page three, the hour of day frequency, please, you know, on each side, the left and the right, we're not in service at nighttime, so that's why it looks like we're doing nothing at nighttime because the ambulances are obviously parked and idle there. Uh, but other than that, unless you guys have any specific questions, I won't uh, take up your time on that because it's pretty much self-explanatory. Hey, we're still staging uh, an ambulance at the uh, firehouse over by... Yeah, so the, uh, <coughs> the uh, operation in terms of our posting assignments and all that stuff has not changed. Uh, during the day, Monday through Friday, EMS 2, which is the second unit, is posted at the firehouse. Uh, EMS-1 is on this side of town. Uh, what our policy is is that if one unit is out, the other ambulance moves to this area of town, so they're in that central, or as you would know it, Council President, that Section 3 area, you know, go central. It's kind of this intersection that we look at as the central post so that that unit can get to wherever. Uh, that's an internal policy that we pay close attention to. Uh, with the recent increase in coverage time on Sundays now, the, there is an ambulance at the Powder Mill Firehouse as well with the specific responsibility of being primary coverage for that Mount Tabor section of town, which also does include Greystone and uh, that Route 10 corridor. Uh, but that has not changed. Um, like I said uh, many years ago when we started, it's many, three now, but uh, definitely a necessity just with response times and stuff like that to keep something on that side of town. And uh, the unit is doing stuff. They are working. Uh, they're not... Uh, not them up at the academy. I mean, you guys are there in no time. But right. Years ago, it would take, take Forever, a long time. Yeah. Well, and that's, and that's uh, if you don't mind me segueing into it, uh, uh, like I said last year, uh, that's one of the things that we did work very hard to, with the mayor support and whatnot, to uh, rebuild kind of that relationship with the county, especially when it comes to the academy, because uh, in my opinion, I stress my opinion, or my view of how I, I reviewed it, is that not that we forgot about that side of town, but we didn't pay enough attention to that side of town. And uh, it was looked at as if, yes, you know, technically they paid taxes to Parsippany in a sense, but we didn't provide them with any services. And not that that was said, but that was just always the cultural that I got that, oh, well, the Marsh Minutemen respond to the academy. Or